last night. And we're live. No, no, no. Um, the the iPhone six event. I, I hit that eight hour mark. Oh, yeah. Time. Oh yeah, because you kept going, didn't you? At the end of it. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I was like so tired by the end of it. Anyways, stream has started, which means the video will start. Um, I don't know if anybody actually watches these like after the fact, because I feel like unless you actually want to see our live commentary like after the fact, maybe you do. Who knows? It doesn't matter. Who cares? You just anyway, do it for fun anyway. I know. Adrian here. Duncan uh, here. Boy, my good friend, joined by my good friend, if I can speak. Duncan, there you are. How's it going, man? We've been speaking here. Not for too bad. Time. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pumped. What time is it for your, you over there? Because it's always. I know it's always. PM. Okay. Yeah, it's always. It's always way too late for you. Yeah, always, always two AM. Like, uh, when you told me, Duncan told me that the WWDC event was, was a couple days ago when we spoke. That he told me it was coming up on Monday. As soon as I heard that, I was like, oh, like anytime I hear like after cover event, like I just know like 24 hours, like I'm not going to sleep probably for <laughs> that. Because after this, you have to do, you do a write up of everything and get yeah. it all covered. Yep, yep, yep. And it's always because like these are like the, you know, even like I don't cover, I, I, I missed the IO event because I was, I was in the Philippines and that happened, but like anytime these events, especially the Apple ones, like our traffic like shoots up, you know, like just because like everybody, I don't know. It's, it's it's always the busiest days. Anyways, the event is soon to start. We are live. Um, Duncan, I know you and myself included. I literally shot my per, my number prediction. I shot my expectations video just uh, this afternoon. Um, me and Duncan have been kind of out of the loop with the, this whole WWDC. Absolutely. Yeah. There's not much that's been mentioned. Like, there's no leaked anything as far as yeah. I know. That's true. I mean, I follow the couple of stuff, but like I've been gone these last two and a half weeks, so I haven't really been following up with all this stuff. Oh, I see that, Tim. We love you. <laughs> Thank you for yeah, all, we, all we know is that um, it's not going to be talking about an Apple TV, right? Was, yeah, yeah. Was... As far as I've heard, all the reports said like it's it's out of production, so we're not going to hear that. Hopefully, the stream is loud enough to kind of so you can hear it. But regardless of the fact. I'll get it out of the way now if anybody watches after the, the fact. We are not just straight up rebroadcasting the stream. We're adding in our thoughts, our commentaries. So if you're watching this video, like if you come from YouTube and you randomly searched WWDC and you land on this video and you're wondering why you're not getting the whole Apple keynote, like go watch that on, what is it? They, they, they post it up on their I, site. I can, I can give, the, uh, give the stream if they've got VLC. I can keep posting it in the chat. So if they actually yeah, want to watch yeah, it properly true. on their PC. Yeah, more than happy to provide that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Well, at, at the moment, I'm watching some sort of movie from some director guy. Hmm. I don't know. It's like a, a, a. What are you watching? What's this so officially for you? Is it just a stage? It's not even. Hang on, I'm trying to refresh the page now. I at the moment, it's, it's playing some sort of cinematic from some guy. I still don't even have the stream. See, it sounds. It looks like an ad to me, but apparently it's at the Apple rehearsal. Is the stream even? I don't know if the stream is live or is my Safari not updated. My Safari has to be updated. There's no way in that my Safari is not updated. That'd be really weird. Yo, my Twitter feed just it jumps like every time I refresh it because everybody who I follow is like tweeting about this. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah, Tom Warren's just done the same link as me as well. So. The Verge has just tweeted the uh, the link that you can put on VLC. It's actually nice. I, I wonder if they leaked that. I got a feeling it got leaked by them. Yeah, so more people watch their stream. Boy or something. Yeah. Who knows? Up, oh, we got one viewer. Hello to our first viewer of the broadcast. Thank you for tuning in to the live stream. Somebody is periscoping it apparently. Yep. Nope. Have you tried out Periscope yet, Duncan? I have not. Is it iOS only? No, it's Android 2. Android 2. I think. Actually, I just... don't quote me on that. I don't know. Okay. I've had no reason to broadcast, but I guess it would be a bit weird. I could broadcast myself, broadcast myself eating some cheese. Cheese <laughs> Periscope. Cheese the scope. It's really, I don't know, I really like it. Like, I know we yeah. had stuff like it before, but like, I really, I don't know, maybe it's just the people I'm following. It's really interesting. I still don't understand. Like, am I the only one who's not getting Apple.com showing the stream? 
Is my OS X not updated? Uh, the moment it seems to be like a cheesy commercial, an extended yeah. version of a cheesy commercial. Maybe we're still waiting for that to end. Because I don't think they start the official stream until like it literally is the event, right? If I'm not mistaken, like usually, usually they have like a countdown or something. I'm ready. Yeah, I think this seems to be a cinematic talking about the Apple, actual Apple event, but it's like they're doing music and and videos and like making it all flashy and having a stage and all this sort of stuff. It's not. It's not like a commercial. Other for for another company. It's literally Apple saying it looks like made a, a movie, like a little mini movie. Mm. Really strange. This reminds me of the Galaxy event where they had ta <laughs> quite oh, the tat on. That was that was hands down bad. So far, uh, that's what I'm seeing. But I don't know if it's just me. I, I I'm not following the Twitter. I need to have that on it. That had to be. Oh, there we go. Have a great WWDC, right? Everyone's clapping now. Wait, wait. And it's Tim Cook. What? Why can I see this? You screen? can be on your Mac. I'll give you the link for it. Yeah, I have it. Can you send me that again? Why is the? Put it into the the chat. Oh, the Skype, right? Wait, 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 I just need it from. Are they not streaming it? No, it says our live broadcast begins at. I cannot. Why can I? I can't Welcome copy it. Welcome to WWDC. Oh, it's coming up as a flipping. It's coming up as a link. Hang on, maybe. Oh, I can copy that. And I think I got it. Yeah, it should be an M three U eight file, but you can put that into Open Network. How do I even do this on VLC? Open Network, you said. Open Network, and then put the link in. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Twenty six. Twenty six. WWDC. Jesus Christ. Twenty six. Wait, when did they store it? All right. I don't know, but this seems the best feed. Whoa, that quality is really good. Yeah. yesterday. Our youngest scholarship winner. Is that too loud for you? Girl from New York. That's fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and eat some more cheese. Want to go through the statistics? We've got over a hundred sessions planned for you, and over a hundred and fifty labs, so that you can get your hands on our latest technology. Okay, so I don't know if the Apple, like Apple dot com, is just not working. Just about any question that you might have. It looks like everybody is having to watch this thing. We have a lot more people that would have liked to have been here this morning, but unfortunately, we just can't fit any more in, as you can tell. And so, for the first time, we're not only live streaming the keynote. But we're live streaming thirty sessions of the conference as well. Oh, interesting! You say you're live streaming the keynote. I don't see it. <laughs> now, before we get right to the show, I'd like to bring up something that I saw on the news just a few days ago. This is Brandon Moss of the Cleveland Indians, and he hit his one hundredth career home run last Tuesday. What are you doing? Wearing the Apple Watch? It's a huge milestone for a baseball player. Not a lot of people do this. And you can imagine how much that ball would mean to him to have it. It turns out we, the ball was hit into the Indians' bullpen, and his teammates decided to play a bit of a prank on him. They oh yeah, they hold it for ransom. They wanted all Apple devices or something. And like this that. is the list of things they asked for: Apple watches, iPads, MacBook Airs, iPhones. It's unbelievable. It's a shopping list for the Apple Store. Now, okay. It's thrown off his humor. Hey, it's John Rettinger. What? I just saw John for Lakers. That didn't seem quite right to us. He's in the front row. And so, what? Really? Yeah, the YouTuber in the front row. And I have the ball right here. What's he gonna do? Give those devices to the whole team? We're giving the ball to Branson, to Brandon, and we're going to give everything his teammates asked for to them, so everybody's happy. So congratulations! How charitable! And good luck on the next time. Wait, this whole time have you been seeing nothing? Now I can see your stream. Okay, okay. I'm just making sure. I see, I see your screen share of what your your stream. I don't know if anyone can, well, if anyone's even watching. To be honest. Yeah. To the Macintosh. Okay. And next, it's streaming we've got anyway. a great update for iOS, the world's most advanced mobile operating system. And today, okay, we're moving quick. We're bringing native apps to the watch 
Okay, he just jumped hey. out. Good stuff. Right off the bat, he just said it. With a new version of the Watch OS, which gives the developers even more time to create even greater apps. Which means we as consumers won't receive it. Well, we haven't got Apple Watches anyway, so it doesn't matter to me and you, but people with the Apple Watch probably won't get that for a few months. No, 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 because they have to mess around with it, right? Yeah. So we're very excited about this. There's wow, people are freaking fast to post these articles. Day. Holy Other crap. Than to tell you, everything's going great. Nine to five posts that article and real fast. I'd like to bring out my friend and colleague, Craig Federighi, to take you through OS 10 and I. They all love Craig Federighi, apparently. <laughs> He's the head of hair at Apple. Wow. This stream is really good quality. Yeah, it's like things ahead of me on your stream. I'm sorry. It's annoying. No, 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 it's good. I'm, I'm listening to your stream. Well, I'm kind. It's a bit quiet. But... Oh, whoops. Beautiful release with a gorgeous I got it. and breakthrough features like continuity. That let you work across your devices like never before. Do you use that? Now, the adoption rate continuity. No. Nope. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so my, phone, my phone doesn't work. So. Five percent of active Mac users are running our. Do you mean it doesn't work? It doesn't. It's not compatible. No, no, it's, it's not on contract. So. Actually, I could still technically use it even though I don't have signal. But no, I never really. Oh, so you don't have the signal to make the calls or receive the calls. Yeah, because um. I thought I was moving when it expired, so I was like, I'm not going to renew it to your contract, you know? Oh, yeah, of course. Of OS X, we knew we wanted to build on What's the naming strengths it? of Yosemite with some really great refinements and advances. Oh, wait, did they rename the real, it at all? The real question, of course, was what to call it. Okay. Big Sir, so we Redwood, to again, who wants to take their guess? To our crack Apple marketing team. Zebra. Now, in typical He's gonna California do his fashion, typical joke thing. with the project kickoff meeting. And then headed immediately into a team building offsite. Of course, they're in their traditional Apple marketing free bottom Friday. I'm definitely attire. throwing out the jokes out there. They, they say it's all part of their process. Uh, sure When's the last time you saw like a censored thing on Apple? <laughs> so That's uh... a consultant. He told them the answer was to be found within, not within themselves, but within Yosemite. So he's talking about the name. Oh, so it's somewhere in Yosemite. Is OS 10 El Capitan. El Capitan. What? Whoa. <laughs> They're going out there. That's a crazy name. El Capitan is focused in two major areas. El Are they actually calling it that? Yeah, El Capitan, <laughs> apparently. We've made Spotlight more expressive, more powerful, and more knowledgeable than ever. We made big enhancements to the apps you use most, and well, we made some real great advance advancements in the area of how you manage Windows on the system. How do you even? But rather than wow. just talk about it, I'd like to show it to you. So let's start with a demo right now. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about El Capitan. I mean, it's cool. Now your first task, of course, in a demonstration or whenever. I don't you know if that one that one doesn't. Is does that roll off the tongue for you, El Capitan? Why uh, <laughs> I see you running El Capitan. El Capitan. It's like the Spanish version of like OS X. So it looks like looks like we're not getting any design overall. We're just getting some. That's a keeper. We're just getting fixes. Okay, mind you, I still don't see the live stream on Apple's freaking home page. So I'm just gonna. Wipe it away just like that. So some real nice little gestures. Let's move on now to Safari. Now in Safari, I have some sites that I like to keep 6 around. Six point zero point five. Maybe my Safari is not up to date. And now, no way. Safari, my Safari is totally up to date. I can pin those sites just like this. So there's I'm gonna pin my. Nope. Oh, what the heck did I just do? Whoops. No. Uh, no. All right there. Well, my my current right now. Oh, we're behind. To me, that's fine. New tab. I'm gonna open up a 
say this one. Take oh, do we see YouTube comments? Or do they come up in the Hangout? Or do they not? They come up on the YouTube page itself. Well, just a tab. Ah, really crap. weird. It's okay, no, it's two viewers. It was two channel. viewers a second ago. Like oh, he got Rick rolled. Oh, he closed it. You see that? So, uh, I'm interested in seeing this, uh, this Giants game. And now Spotlight can actually help me out there. So I'm just going to search for the SF Giants. And we see right now, I guess, uh, current game score. So they're showing game. OS 10 uh, like El Capitan right now. Friday, so I can just search for this is uh, Friday. See, we get the weather. It's literally called the captain, the Capitan. The Spotlight panel and move it around. It did get Rick rolled. I just saw it on my version. That's quite funny. Which one, the Rick roll? Yeah. <laughs> so today, the you know, I told you I was out earlier. Yeah. As I was, I went to go pick up a friend, and he was in the shower when I got to his place, and his Spotify was on his laptop. But I noticed he was streaming it to his bathroom because it was on the dock. So I just started changing his music while he was in the shower. <laughs> He thought he just thought his music was skipping, so until I finally played a Rick Roll, like while he was in the shower, and then he knew something was up. So he's showing some mail updates. These are the native apps within OS X. No UI overhaul. It's literally just a just like tweaks and stuff. I always like their backgrounds. They do though. Because now, what, oh, it sends all, it's all about places in, like, California and stuff. And I find exactly what I'm looking for. So this is really a great way to search. Okay. Then so they've added, like, contextual, what do you call that? What do you call that, contextual yeah, search? Con yes, contextual search, yeah. I don't know what my desktop Whoa. looks like after a day working on OS X, because it's a powerful system, and we tend to have a lot of things open. Now, OS X provides some great ways. This is it. I think they're going to do some control center. Apparently, they're bringing, like, a control center. Smoother, simpler, faster than ever. I'm just going to take three fingers and swipe up on the trackpad. You see, I get in this gorgeous overview of Mission Control. I'll just bring well, thankfully, they got rid of all that you crazy that stuff. Mail. Just like that works really great. But of course, OS 10 provides great tools also to organize your windows. And one of those is full screen. I'm just going to take this window here, full screen. And I'm going to reply. Looks like there's a uh, message here from Eddie. He says that he, uh, sorry about bailing on the team dinner last night. He was, uh, apparently prepping for the keynote. So that's that's understandable. But it looks like actually I just got a new uh, mail from uh, Jeff here. And now I can just click away and it hides. And then, oh, hold on, <laughs> busted, Eddie. So I think I'll just drag this actually right into my compose window. It hops right up automatically. And I can do okay, it just it like that. It's really screen great. Test. And I can even open up tabs in compose oh, thankfully. as well. Yeah, that's good. It's really handy. So this is a great way now to work in full screen in mail. They're just optimizing the apps. <laughs> iOS was pretty quick. They just breezed over iOS, huh? I haven't said anything about it yet, have they? Oh, I thought they opened with it. Maybe not. I said iOS and OS X, but they've gone straight to OS X. Okay. Oh, look, they have window snapping. It's, they implemented that natively now. I feel like every keynote app will, like, kills a third-party developer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hmm, I like that. I get a beautiful graphical link. Graphical link. link. Uh, what I what I dragged in there. I'm gonna drag in uh, some. Reminds me of Twitter's quote feature. Yeah, yeah, stage. exactly. So there you go. Got some yurts here. It's a great way to work split screen. Oh. Also provided a really easy way. So it's like window management into their own desktops. So let me just take this window here. I'm just gonna drag it up past the top of the screen. And drop it in just like that. So oh, that's easy. more convenient. But I guess, can also yeah. do this to take a window full screen. So let's take photos. Just drop it in right here. Full screen. And now check this out. I'm going to take messages, drop it on photos, and create a split view, just like that. Okay. Totally awesome. Convenient stuff. This is just micro updates. Nothing like. 
crazy. Oh, thank you for the retweet. Just two pixels if you're watching. Or just one pixel, sorry. This finally has a snap feature. Windows has had that since what, seven? It knows more than ever to look up weather. Uh, yes. Three people watching. Hello to all the viewers out there. So far, if you're new to the stream, we've covered just literally OS X. El Capitan. El Capitan, the best name for an OS that you'll ever find. Thoughts so far, Duncan? I'm going to switch to your camera view. Um, so far, it's been not that interesting, in my opinion. They've just been showing some things that are features that could have been added a long time ago, I guess. So it's the same stuff that they always do. Little refinements. Chinese nothing. Refinements. Yeah, exactly. Uh, nothing crazy. Ooh, a new system font. <gasps> there go. That's the killer feature right there. Helvetica's gone. <laughs> and app launches. Yes. Snappiness is two times faster. So yeah, so you guys are like who are watching this later or who may watch later. This is these updates are never like supposed to be like complete overhauls. I feel like even Windows, right? They they haven't even been doing that lately, huh? Yeah, Windows 10 is doing a lot of UI improvements yeah. at the moment, but nothing extremely major. Obviously, the tablet migration and all that. I feel like they've jumped so much, and then they just kind of like do small increases in between. Well, this year, we're bringing metal to the Mac. What is metal again? I forgot. What, I totally forgot what metal is. No idea. I think that's something to do with graphics. OpenGL to run natively on top of metal, making everything you do faster. We're seeing 50% improvements in rendering performance and a 40% reduction in mm -hmm. CPU necessary. Efficiency, okay. That means improved performance for your applications and better battery life. For the benefits of metal, and say that improved battery life. Metal's also great for high performance apps. In fact, metal combines to compute. I want Siri for OS 10. Just bring me Siri for OS 10. In a That's a interesting. I reckon I could do that. Right? Yeah, that'd be pretty easy, right? Just port the port the libraries over. They already have like the built-in voice assistant and stuff. Like, why can't you just? Do you have the equivalent of OK Google on iOS? No, we don't. We have nothing where you can say it. You can. Oh no, no, no! You can do Hey Siri now. Oh, it's Hey Siri. So that's what you should be able to do on your laptop. Yeah, I really feel like. Why are we in like the? Have you seen Iron Man? You know, like why aren't we in that? Yeah. We all want our own Jarvis, don't we? Yeah, or like... That's what I we know, want. Like, I feel like I, I use like certain yeah. software and like... Uh, I'd love to have my own personal Jarvis. Yeah, or like software that's like for... Okay, maybe it just makes me sound super lazy, but to like to control like super simple things like much more easier. Yeah. Maybe that just really does make me sound super lazy, but like I feel like... Nah. I mean, whole, your computer is supposed to help your life. Yeah, like facilitate, you know, like, possible. like, yeah, it's supposed to be a tool. Like, I, I use this app for Spotify that when I raise my hand, like, to my mouth, it mutes the mic. Like, stuff like that. Like, I feel like, I mean, I, I mean maybe they're gimmicky features, but still, I think cool stuff. I've never seen this guy on stage before. Does that really... I guess this is developer speak. This is going to help people who are developing. Oh, he's a developer. Oh. That's why. <laughs> no, it's not because obviously it is WWDC. It's not designed for developers, but yeah, I had no idea. In terms of like about. rendering and OpenCL and OpenGL and all that sort of stuff, it's not. Oh, not that's consumer. what. Consumer. Yeah, like this. What this is all about? Like this isn't interesting to a consumer like me or you who are just like show us cool stuff. Yeah, of course, of course. This is definitely geared towards them. I think more and more because you remember, if you remember, like years ago, remember WWDC was a thing for product releases. Yeah, like, that was awesome. Like, and then it they, made, made everybody want to watch it. Yeah, yeah, like that's when the new iMacs came out. Sometimes they even announced like uh, iPads. They did iPads at WWDC, right? 
Or no, maybe not. I don't know. Finally. Yeah, I think so. WWDC was the thing to watch, which yeah. is why people get excited about it. Yeah. This reminds me of TF2. Yeah, it's like a... It's the Unreal Engine, right? Yeah. That's what talking about. You can destroy anything you want. Gather resources, build a fort. So let's go ahead and wreck this car. Gather its metal. And you are one destruction by chopping down this tree. Get to look for later. Did we mention there are purple death storms? Uh, like this one, for instance. To go. Now, luckily, while we were out exploring, we found a multitude of weapons. And this room. If we can just get across the field. Our friend's been busy building a fort for us to hold up. Did we mention the storms are made of monsters? Better than this room. Aye. There's our friend laying down some covering fire. Okay. So right now, they're showcasing... The whole developer. This, it looks like a, yeah, like a gameplay. Yeah, I think I think this is like they're integrating this for OS X. So this is for this is for the Mac, I think. This is native gaming for OS ten, basically. Yeah, yeah. This looks like Plants vs Zombies meets Team Fortress. All right, let's use that cook we gathered earlier. Fix this wall, build some stairs, meet up with our friend Topside. Whether you're a gamer or a game developer, Metal opens new possibilities for rich, engaging worlds. You can download the Unreal Engine for Mac right now, and the Fortnite beta for Mac starts this fall. Thank you very much. Thank you, random guy from Epic Games. <laughs> Blizzard. Gamers of all of us benefiting from the performance advantages of metal. Oh, yeah. So that is El Capitan. Heroes of the Storm, Mortal Warcraft. Capitan. So now I guess iOS 9. El Capitan. Oh, I haven't tried Heroes of the Storm. Were you on the open beta for that? What was that, sir? You, did you say Heroes of the Storm? Yeah, I'm in the open beta for that. All right, it just got public now, right? I, th uh, I think so, maybe. I know I got contacted by the guys at Blizz to uh, test Free it. upgrade. Woo! Nice. So do the same as Windows. Yeah. That's the one thing I like that they've been doing ever since Yosemite. Next, you guessed it, iOS. Now, our current big release of iOS is iOS 8. And iOS 8 was a huge release with tons of new features for users and a phenomenal set of technologies that you developed all new experiences to the platform. The yeah, I can't hear it, dude. Any chance of it been turned up a little? Yeah, sure, sorry. iPhone users currently running the latest OS. How about now? And this is yeah, really it's fine. Because it means not only are they getting the most recent features, but they're also up to date on all the security of uh, fixes. Security. And you're able to know as a developer that you can target all the users with the latest and greatest APIs. Talking about and the this adoption rate. That actually remains really unique to iOS. So as we look forward... Oh, damn. <laughs> that 12% adoption rate. So we're now looking That's because there's so many devices, though. Yeah, so... Uh, with, with iPhones, iPads, and all that, you get a thing that just says update, and you have to go through carriers. Things like extending your battery life, improving performance... Oh, that's good. They're focusing on the foundation. That's what I like to hear. I don't need any crazy features. Just give me better battery life and other stuff adding intelligence throughout the user experience in a way that enhances how you use your device 
but without compromising your privacy. Things like improving the apps that you use most and taking the experience to the, of the iPad to the next level. I want to start today with intelligence and Siri. Yes. Now, Siri has quietly become Jarvis. incredibly popular, served over <laughs> a billion requests per week. And this is in part because Siri has gotten so great at understanding what we're saying. In just the last year, we've seen a 40% reduction in uh, word error rate down to 5%. That's an industry leading number. And Siri's 40% faster than ever at responding to what we say. Now, for iOS 9, Siri has a beautiful new UI and is capable of doing so much more. Things like, show me photos from Utah last August. Oh, you see, they changed the Siri show thing. Show you the right photos. Yeah. All rainbow. <laughs> and Siri's really great at taking reminders. Now you can ask Siri things like, remind me to grab my coffee off the roof of my car when I get in. Because Siri knows now what you've gotten know? in the car. How does it know that? And of course, we often want to take reminders about things that we're looking at on our device. Some how did wait, how I know that? Safari. Probably tells your GPS location of the car. This, mm -hmm. when I get home, and that reminder refers right back the link to specifically what you were looking at when you took that reminder. So Siri is a great assistant, but the best assistants are proactive. Yes. And so in iOS 9, we're bringing proactivity throughout the system. So say you like to run in the morning, and when you do, you like to listen to music. Well, now your phone can learn that about you. And when you plug in your headphones, it can offer up How much, like, I'm waiting for the articles to come out after this, talking about, like, privacy, yeah. like, hmm. uh, my phone is knowing all about me. And this is all context sensitive to the time the place, and even the devices you're connected to. So you do the same thing in the car later on, and it might offer up the e the uh, audio book that you've been listening to. Okay. Now, as a great assistant, your iPhone can now take invitations that you receive in your email, and without you even touching them, automatically put them on your calendar. Oh, I don't know how people are going to feel about that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Up on my calendar. <laughs> I just send out invites to everybody. I know. Just do it. Have you ever had this happen to you? You, you get a call, calling. the number looks kind of familiar, but you're really not sure who it is. Well, it's a great assistant. Your phone can now look in your email and find out who that person might be and suggest it to you right on the Maybe. screen. <laughs> it may be Duncan, it may not. <laughs> Maybe. Are you okay, John? Also, oh, it's yeah. my John. Whoops. So now when you swipe to the left of the home screen, to get Hi, maybe John. Series offers offers great suggestions. Things like the people that you might want to contact now based on your upcoming meetings and your communication patterns, the apps that you might want to launch. Based hey, on this reminds me of a launcher for Android. Tried out or I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> and also there's a launcher for Android that like location. changed itself based on the time of day. I think it was done by Yahoo. Oh, so yeah, that's quite Done. ever before so for instance i like this idea i just hopefully they implement it nicely and we now support video I, mean, I feel like this is definitely something they needed like vivo vimeo youtube and the Context. itunes store and have these great descriptive cards with a play button so you can play directly do you have a comments enabled for this stream oh yeah you do yeah chat on the right hand side okay, yeah, mine froze for search. <laughs> i tried to type something in the comment box my own thing froze right now like the viewers yeah, can test it. Test. So now the user performs a search. Yeah, mine works. Behind Two likes on the video already. Thanks, Wes. Likes, Thank you. Pull those up in results. Mine froze. And when they tap, like mine was showing viewers earlier, and then the viewer thing disappeared. Into the application. You see, for yeah. I guess we've got nobody viewing. <laughs> and of course, we even provide a convenient backlink. Deep blue app, and then just end this. What were they clapping about? To their search results. Yeah. Who knows? So we think these kinds of intelligence features really make a huge difference where are the, in iOS. Where are these? And to show maybe you how, we're I'd watching like somewhere else. I had two now. people tweeting me earlier, and I was wondering where they were watching from. So I want to take you through a day in the life with <laughs> iOS 9. 9. And we're going to start with uh, a typical day for me uh, today. And uh, we're going to start in my bedroom when, when I woke up in the morning. And you'll notice, because my phone knows that in the morning, uh, I like to meditate, 
that it's offered it's waking up early. right here in the bottom left of the screen. Yeah. So I can just swipe up from the bottom left and I'm taken right in to meditate. That's uh, this is so serene. Oh, uh, well, it looks like I got an email, a, a, a message here from Phil. Um, so Phil says that he's putting together the invite for tonight's big karaoke potluck. And can I still pick up this super awesome karaoke machine? Well, you know, Siri actually, when I take reminders, is able to link me right back to what I'm looking for. So if I want to remember to pick this up, I can just say this to Siri. Remind me about this later today. That's good. So that's the exact same contextual thinking coming from Android M. Reminder. I yeah, the thing you were just telling me about, right? right exactly back. the same thing. Yeah. Well, I think after all, meditation isn't probably for me. So maybe I'll move on to exercise. So it's I good to see it's happening on a lot of platforms. Yeah. And because my phone knows that when I'm in the home gym and I hook up headphones uh, and I like to listen to music, watch what happens when I plug in uh, the cord, my headphones. I know. Jumps right in and offers me some energetic music. So let's all uh, bust a move. Bust. I don't know what kind of exercise we're all doing here, but uh, pretty good. Oh, looks like actually I've got that invitation that Phil was going to send me. So now normally I would have to actually go into mail look at the time, put this on my calendar. But in fact, my phone has automatically done that for me. Let me just swipe down here into Notification Center. We'll look at the, my calendar for the day. And you notice that automatically, it's already been added right there. Uh, now, I don't know. I can day, go good, I can go bad. Uh, my vocal warm-ups, of course, for the karaoke performance. And then- What if I don't want it in my calendar? So, yeah. it uh, looks like I have a little bit of time to prepare my uh, dish for the big potluck. So I'm gonna head I'll invite you for the next two months to go to a stripper meeting. That's just like, you know, when I'm looking <laughs> so every day you have to look at your calendar and it'll tell you there's a stripper meeting. His phone just jumped from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. That's cool. How'd how they get that to happen? <laughs> Time travels. Is that a feature? I want that feature. And here I can call Trent up and he can help me tap into my inner pain and rage that allows me to fuel my vocal performances. I actually haven't been able to find the pain and rage, tell the truth be told. But uh, also, we have all these great apps I can run and locations uh, nearby. For instance, because it's morning, you see coffee and tea and breakfast places are suggested, as well as news. But in this case, I actually want to do a search. I like so the nearby thing. I feel like that's that's something search. they should have integrated a long time ago. So let's just search for potato. And here you notice I'm getting search results right from Yumly. So let me tap into Yumly. And you see I'm deep linked directly in, so I get the great view provided by that application. Now, potato chips aren't exactly what I'm looking for, so I'm just going to hit the back link here. And I can just browse directly in to another result, Canadian poutine. Now, that looks like exactly what the doctor ordered. Yes. So let's take a look at the ingredients. Looks like six tablespoons of unsalted butter. I'm down with that. So I'm going to make a, uh, at least a double batch. So I can just use search. To actually search for uh, to do a conversion of tablespoons figure out how much that is so that actually is three quarters of a cup so i'm gonna so it's basically like spotlight in the magnet and uh, make myself some fine poutine so search is really handy but siri is also great at search so i want to jump forward to later today when i think i'll be reminiscing Time about wwdc's past and i can ask siri to help me with that Show my photos from last June in San Francisco. Why would you do that? Oh yeah, yeah I guess that's your this lady. is great. All these photos from WWDC, and you notice now photos. It's not a massive feature. It's such a limited context. Slide through photos super quickly, just like the photos this. thing. Let's yeah, I don't know. It's just me. I, it's not that many times I think to myself I want to see photos from December oh, three years right. ago. The it's thing like, that I think is like I don't even know what I don't know the exact date. Like if I, if no, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Eddie Q. In fact, when I want to get really this is more of a novelty thing. karaoke night, I like to turn to my Eddie karaoke album. So let's do that now. Show my karaoke photos of Eddie. How does it know that? That's kind of cool. Oh, that is the master at work. See, that makes more sense if it you like say a context as far as like what you're doing and if it knows somehow <laughs> based on your location. Totally dope. Um, great stuff. Well, I could really look at these just all day, but you know, actually my assistant has given me a r reminder based on traffic conditions that it's time to leave. So I'm going to wrap up this demo of intelligence. And That's I like Google now. Yeah.
more assists to leave by Vlad to arrive on time. It's exactly what Google now does. That's, uh, I see. I see now. That's good. So you've seen how we've been able to bring intelligence throughout the experience in iOS 9, but we do it in a way that does not compromise your privacy. We don't mine your email, your photos, or your contacts in the cloud. Yeah, you know that you know they had to throw this in there because people were going to go AWOL. Yeah. <laughs> All of this is done on device, and it stays on device under your control. <laughs> and if we do have to perform a lookup on your behalf, for instance, for current traffic conditions, it's anonymous. It's not associated with your Apple ID. It's not linked to other Apple services, and it's not shared with third parties. Why would you do that? You are in control. That is intelligence in iOS. <laughs> Next, let's turn to Apple Pay. And to take you through it, I'd like to bring to the stage our vice president of our Apple Pay business, Jennifer Bailey. Jennifer. Jennifer Bailey. Yeah, they're saying some article about like this is the one of the first time that a girl is taking the stage. It's great to be here. We have been hard at work on our goal of replacing the wallet, and we've got some exciting updates for you today. I hope you've all tried Apple Pay. I heard they're releasing like a rewards program as an incentive. Last year, we started with credit and debit cards, and we now have over 2,500 banks supporting Apple Pay. And this fall, Discover will bring Apple Pay to the more than 50 million card members. Oh. That's a ton. Popular merchants. Do you use anything like that out there in the UK? Expanding their acceptance for Apple. No, Pay. we don't have anything like a Google Wallet in the UK. We don't have any form of the only thing we have now that we're now integrating is flipping the ones on the cards that are tapped to pay, but not through phone. Mm -hmm. I was looking through that the other day. There really isn't any solution for us. In Japan, like we've had that stuff, right, for the longest time, like on the flip phones and shit, right? But like yeah. nobody ever knew how to use it. Like that's the hard thing. Like unless you were Japanese and you knew how to use your phone, you know, like yeah. people didn't know how to use it. Like I've been like I remember the first phone I had when I was in like seventh grade. I could buy drinks from the vending machine with it, and it would just charge my phone bill. <laughs> But like, nice. still like, it's kind of baffles me that this far between now we don't have like, I don't know, maybe you can pay with the iPhones, I just don't know about it. Pre-orders are starting today on Square.com, and these will be available in our Apple retail stores starting this fall. I like the idea of that. I think that's like where it's going to go, evidently. Like, I don't like carrying around. It's so weird. I used to love carrying around cash just because like in those situations where they don't take card, because there's a lot of places here where they don't take card, you know? Yeah. Cash is always handy, and I think it'll always be handy. But then, like, and thanks to our amazing carrying your phone, which you always have on you, is so convenient. Apps as well. Apple Pay is so easy to use in apps. Our developers are telling us they're seeing more than two times increase Check in yeah. checkout rates, and we're adding new apps with Apple Pay. To is this the first time? I mean, it's weird. But is it? Is it? This is, this is the first time we've seen a lady on the stage, right? I believe so. Yeah. Marketplace. But didn't Tim Cook address this? He yeah. said something about it being more diversity. They hired that one chick from the UK from Burberry. If you have a look at the web page, I think someone did in the comments. Um, if you have a look at the web page of their all their PR department or like all their executive staffs, there's like 18 male members and one female. Wow, that's crazy. Quite ironic. <laughs> They hired the the one they hired from the UK. They paid her like a ridiculous amount because they she was literally the CEO of a luxury brand and they snatched her. Wow. With the grand momentum of Apple Pay in the US, we are now excited. So far, we've heard about OS 10, iOS, and the Apple. Hey, there you go. That's for you. Awesome. <laughs> it's all for you. <laughs> Coming next month. Is your bank up there? The I use three banks, and they're all up there. Oh, nice. Great merchants are also lining up to support Apple Pay. Oh, like Apple Boots, support me over here in Japan. And iconic British brands like Marks and & Spencer and Waitrose. I didn't know Marks & Spencer was a British brand. 2,000 locations supporting Apple Pay in the UK. That's more than we started.
started with is interested that I've chosen the UK. Yeah. We're also thrilled that our customers will be able to commute and pay for their fares on the London transportation system Whoa. without. That's going to be a big thing in the UK. Yeah. I see a shitload of people with iPhones in London. Yeah, I bet. I feel like that's like a huge like base for them, right? Yeah. That we're adding in iOS 9. First, you'll be able to add your store credit and debit cards. I mean, I mean, I imagine one, it costs like millions and millions of dollars to roll it out into places like that. But also yeah. like, imagine like the, the, the uh, like how fast that will spread, you know, like if you put that in somewhere like exactly. how many people yeah. can see people using their iPhones and be like, you know what, I want that. Cards. So here's the rewards Free thing. Coffee and donut lovers, Dunkin' Donuts will bring Apple Pay to Dee Dee Perks to their stores beginning this fall. I don't want that. I don't want coffee perks. <laughs> I buy way too much. Apple Pay automatically presents the right uh, card, so you'll never miss a reward. That's good. With the expansion of Apple Pay and the new types of cards, we've decided it's time to rename Passbook to Wallet. Mm. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> as long as you let me hide that yeah. app on my home screen. They could put Google in front of it. Yeah. I feel like maybe that was a shot at them. Didn't Google call their thing like Android Pay or something? It's Google Wallet, isn't it? No, no, I mean recently at IO, didn't they release oh, Android Pay? Yeah, 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 it's Android Pay. With the progress towards our vision and with the momentum of Apple Pay. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats, UK. Congrats. <laughs> Yay. So that's Apple Pay. Let's turn now to our enhancements to the apps you use most. We're going to start with Notes. Notes, notes. Use regularly by about half of our users on iPhone. For iOS 9, we have some really great enhancements. Start with how you work with simple text. So now, Notes provides a really handy toolbar with formatting options. So it's easy, for instance, to create titles, heading styles, numbered lists. Course, you know what big thing would be, be for me for Notes? Checkboxes. So Notes makes that really easy. Hey. <laughs> Spot on. Yeah, now, that's true. Worth a thousand words, we make it easy to get it. Your like computer. Google Keep, they're all checkboxes. Yeah, that makes sense. Dang, they're, they're really adding shit into the notes app. <laughs> by just Look at that. Pictures and scribbling. Wow, what the heck? Guess what just popped open now on the Apple.com site? The actual stream. The actual stream, wow. And it's behind. Me, but a lot of times, the things I want to put on my notes are things that I'm looking at that I find in other apps. For instance, the web page in Safari. So now, from the share sheet, you can just, with a tap, add a link right back into your notes. It's really easy to find your notes. So we organize them by time, of course, and now we have these great thumbnails to let you see your embedded images at a glance. But we also provide this cool new attachments view. Well, that shows you so they're really beefing. Like the notes just went from this like super simple app to like <laughs> yeah, but to uh, um, what is awesome, awesome note? I think it is for. I swear, it's like, it's like their objective is to knock out a lot of third party developers. I feel like, <laughs> yeah, just provide it all natively. To think, dude, that one when the iPhone first generation came out, Jobs is like, Who needs App Store? You remember that? Yeah, you remember when jailbreaking was primarily just because you wanted actually you wanted apps, you want to actually do more with your phone, yeah. Usage on iOS is 3.5. Or you had to do it because of the control center, like all the stuff that they've rolled in now since. It's crazy. Now, maps, of course, historically have been focused on drivers. They emphasize things like freeways and roads. You can do stuff but for like bicyclists for our iOS and walkers. Users, they're, they're mostly focused on public transit. And Ubers. so now we've created a great map just for them. Yes, Ooh. it's transit. Yes, <laughs> it's trans. <laughs> With transit, we provide a map that emphasizes all of the. Oh, it's so funny when people say stuff like that. I was watching a, a Verge interview today with a, a guy who works at Facebook. Right. And he was like, they were talking about the new instant article feature that's coming to Facebook. Multimodal routing. 
So he's like, this is my favorite feature of Instant Article. When you click it, it opens instantly. And I was like, wow. I was like, did he really just say that? Like, this is my favorite feature of Instant Article. You <laughs> guess that it opens instantly. It's like, this is my feature of this hamburger. It's got burger in it. Yeah, we got ham and burger. Oh my god, it's so funny because he was so serious. It's actually an enormous underground structure spanning many city blocks. And so we carefully surveyed okay, is this all public the transit? entrances like train subways? so that we could give you This, this has to work globally to be any use. Travel from where you actually yeah. are. Like, I, I bet this is US only. But also probably probably right now, initially. Catching your train on time and being stuck. Imagine how like hard that is to map all that stuff out and like... Yeah. taught Siri all about transit, so it's effortless mm -hmm. to ask Siri for directions. And we're going to be rolling maps out. Oh, yeah, look, it's only these places. Starting right now. with these cities. Oh, London. Huh. Oh, wow. And I'd imagine, because you guys have, like, a huge, whoa, more dang. In China. Even China. Wow. That's huge. It's a lot of ground to cover, literally. Mm. Now, when it comes to searching in maps, we're now letting you find I want nearby by stuff. Nearby with just a tap. And when you find a location, the only problem living in, here is like not enough people add to those apps right where it's like look right for this the nearby. Like whether they like support, three yeah. people yeah. support those Apple Pay merchants. <laughs> Maps is great on iPhone and iPad, and of course, the Mac as well. Of course. And that is Maps. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they have guys who just specifically go, woo, woo, on top of the cloud thing. To build in, you the iOS guy. are there because they represent fundamental experiences to living on a mobile device. Okay, where are we going? There's been one Home. that we've been wanting to do for years, something that so many of us find ourselves wanting to do every day on our device. And so today, huh? I'm pleased to announce that we're music new application. And it's called News. Oh. News. I totally what, do, you remember new, do you remember a newsstand that everyone wanted to try and get off their flipping screen? Was that newsstand? Personal yeah, it was newsstand. Now, here's an article. I thought he news. said nudes at first. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I want to do that every day. Um, nudes. nudes. <laughs> I, want to, I want to take them. I want to see them. Custom layout and rich typography. Nudes is also interactive. So this is coming to iOS so 9, right? Look and yeah, but looks good. I'd like to invite to the stage our vice president of application product management, yeah. Prescott. <laughs> Another app we can't remove from our home page. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I would have done? I would have got the developer from Flipboard. Yeah, they should have just. It's not like they don't have the money. Yeah. Yeah, the developer from Flipboard. Another app we can't remove from Flipboard, apparently. My Twitter's like, woman number two. <laughs> this is pretty much kind of like news. Or not news thing. Oh, they call that daring fireball. Okay. I could keep going, but I think that's a great story. Flipboard just died. My Twitter, my Twitter stream is going crazy. It's based on the choices I just made, and it's all my news in one place. You can see it looks great. It's easy to scan, and it updates. It looks nice, but I, I swear, did they buy a news app? Maybe they bought in the news app recently. But the best ones are built that we don't know about. Apple News format, like this Wired article featuring Rashida Jones. Google also, does have its own news app as well. Oh really? I had no idea. Rich typography, beautiful images. I don't know. I can maybe have to show you what it looks like. But it looks good. I mean, so like, I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, I'm gonna jump to you. Go ahead. That's basically what Google News looks like, and it takes the weather and puts it at the top for your location, and then shows the news underneath it. So it's like a timeline of news. That's the official Google News. Yeah, it's got it all grouped into categories. That's how times look at this. 
in timeline. So this is nice. I mean, it looks good. It, it reminds me of a lot of, there's an app I use that's just almost like, I mean, exactly like how you said, it reminds me a lot of Flipboard too. It looks good. The animation makes it come to life and frankly, who knew we had such neat handwriting? Okay. Swipe again and I get an article from Bon Appetit. Great summer recipes and a crazy little jiggly thing. This is kind of fun. So I'm a little busy right now. So I'm going to go ahead and bookmark this to read later. Next, ESPN. I love you, Steph. Uh, so. oh, I read ESPN for the articles, but there's also some beautiful photos and videos. What did you say? I read I read ESPN for the articles that you're making a joke. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Since the Apple Steak. Not so much last night. Let's see if Steph can make this one. Swift! All right. He's going to be there for us next game. In addition, <laughs> They're just, all of them are rooting for the Warriors. Part of what's fun about sports, so of course, rich infographics can be part of it. I'm going to swipe back to for you. Now, news is. On an iPad, it would look really good. I wonder. I mean, I guess it could look good on the phone, too. I'm interested in. But what if I want to discover something new? Well, I can tap here in the bottom on Explore. And Explore, based on what I've read, will show me. I feel like everybody out there is trying to do a news thing now. Yep. And I think so, it's it's, it's, I'm gonna it's go smart and on the only reason because, like, normal people, like, me and you are, uh, you know, of course we do, but, like, my friends and other people I know, they'll never, like, they would never normally watch or read the news. You know what I mean? Unless it's yeah. something huge. But, like, I when I saw Snapchat do that Discover thing, a lot of my friends watch that because they're already on Snapchat. Like, they're always on Snapchat. So, like, they randomly see that and they'll watch, like, a Discover. You know, I don't know if you know what Discover is. Have you, do you use Snapchat? Um, ish. I have one person that Snapchats me. Have you seen the Discover thing where you swipe all the... I haven't, no. So, basically, it's, like, a, a Snapchat you can watch of, like, news stories. Or, like, you can see little news stories within Snapchat of these providers. Oh, okay. It's like a way for them to make revenue model because like they have networks on there. But like I feel like when big companies do that, like they make it native in a way where people are already wherever they're already at. Like more people who typically wouldn't read the music will. Then again, you're right. This might be them packaging newsstand in a nicer way. That way we don't. <laughs> Try to install it. This is about the first civilian artist in space. Cool concept and really cool. I like how it flows. That's cool. I want to show you this. Yeah, but she has been doing this for like five minutes now. Something we call photo mosaics. Look how beautiful. All right, I think we get it. The show's news. Yeah. Stunning. Pictures yeah. and text. Woo! Just tap to zoom in on the photos. It looks great. It we think there's never right. been a more beautiful magazine reading experience, a mobile reading experience in general, and this is just one of many channels. It's not going to screw over all the people who do like magazines. Didn't they used to do magazines? Do a quick look at news. Yeah, they have. This is just put it publicly, isn't it? They still have magazines. It's like it looks like it's based off of their iBooks. That's what they're called. Ah, uh, okay. It looks like it's just based off of iBooks to me, and it looks good. It's just them pretty much packaging it natively. Stunning content. Personalized for you, fantastic on iPad and on and iPhone, iPhone as well. And of course, bringing out the rolling out today. <laughs> okay, here we go again with the privacy. We're aware of yep. news is designed from the ground up with your privacy in mind. Why are they so worried about privacy again? I don't know. I think just because like the news lately, like I feel like just because like news lately, they've been like any company, they just chew you up. I don't know why everybody's so privacy conscious all of a sudden. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I literally feel like when you get a device like that or you get anything, like you're literally just signing a lot away. And that sounds horrible, but I feel like you're scrolling through those agree like, things anyway, and you're like, you should have an idea. Like, I don't want to say privacy is dead, but I mean, like, I don't know. The more people want, the more they have to give away. Yeah, and I mean, like, really, like, I mean, I don't know the numbers, so I could be totally wrong. Like, how much are we, like, 
like with all the stuff we're giving away, like how much has that really come back to bite somebody, you know? Yeah, exactly. Unless you're doing something I feel like you're not supposed to be doing or something. And like that's the only reason you're concerned about like your data being sent off to some company. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Next, let's turn to iPad. Okay. Now iPad is a transformational device. iPad Pro. For our users joking. in education. Yeah, you're right. I think it's just purely all software. And at yeah. Home, for many of them, their I don't iPad think we're gonna see any hardware stuff. Computer. Man, whatever happened to the and you remember the one last thing or one more thing? Yeah, one more thing. Ah man, I remember that hearing that phrase just brought joy to me. Now it starts with something really simple. It's how you work with text. And that brings us to the quick type keyboard. Now oh, yeah, I forgot about that stuff. The suggestion bar that makes it quicker than ever to type. Hello to the four viewers in the chat. Right now we're covering what are they covering? They're covering just OS ten and iOS, basically. Yeah, lately they've been focusing all about iOS nine on the iPhone and iPad. It's really handy. But you know, what makes a multi touch keyboard so special is that it can be anything you want. It can transform. Is that a manual cut and copy paste button? It is. You can now just put two fingers down on the keyboard. And it becomes a trackpad instantly. Whoa. Forced to hand injury. A lot of people, that's a jailbreaking, a jailbreaking tweak. That's a huge. Oh, I see. A lot of people like that in jailbreak. It's cool. Because people hate like typing and then switching and then typing and switching. It's for us band of lazy people out there. Physical keyboard to your iPad as well. We made that better than ever. We oh. provide a way to discover all of the shortcuts that can accelerate your op operations and the applications using the keyboard. And we provided shortcuts for app switching. This might look familiar to some of you. Whoa. As well as the okay. searching in Spotlight. So there's so all iPads type. But now I want to turn to the big one. And Multitasking is finally on the iPad. <laughs> Split window. Thing. Split window? It looks like it, right? I feel like everybody thought they were going to do an iPad Pro and I think they're just going to do it in software. Which technically means they could have done this all along, right? Because it could, yeah. Because it could. Okay, finally. I mean, I mean, this may be the. So let's start here on my iPad. And what I'm going to do first is double tap on the home button. Okay, let's see how this looks, though. App switcher. Really gorgeous. That it reminds me of Windows Vista. Previews of all the apps. Yeah. Just move right into some you remember that? <laughs> you know, the little, that little button where you could go through all the yeah. previews. And you remember, like, Windows at the Vista. time you thought that was the coolest thing in the world? I, mean, I did, at least. I can slide it right in. I think I used it once and never again. Of course, it's fully interactive, right? It was a Windows skin tap, wasn't it? And it did it before. Yeah. Oh, I still got it Windows 7. Wow. Really? Yeah, I just did it. <laughs> I forgot it even existed. Whoa, so look at that. Under. Of course, fully interactive, so I can tap into another day. Let's bring in another app. I'm going to bring in the new Notes app. Finally. Just like that. Now, sometimes wow. I want to stay working in the The concepts are pretty spot on with it. Line. So I can just tap here on the divider, and now I'm in split view. They're both completely active. Do you know what most? I think most people want to do yeah. though that they should really try and make use of, watching a video and doing something at the same time. No, no, yeah, definitely. That's what I want. That's what I thought. Split screen is before. Can, let's see if he chose that. No, notes is actually because that's what I would want to do sometimes. Like sometimes I'm texting and I'm watching. Yeah, text me while I'm watching a video. And you just now have photos with notes on the side. This is really great if I'm taking notes while working. Because. On my, on my phone, I got viral a uh, app called Viral, which is like a pop-up player. So I just put that in the corner, and then I'm right back into I do whatever button. I want. But. Mm. I can follow links, of course, for my notes. So let me just tap on this link, and you see Safari loads it right here on the side. It's not going to adjust. The Finally, like so true multitasking. Fifty-fifty view with notes and Safari. And I can tap yeah, on but is it just app. notes? Can you do any app? He was showing a lot of other apps. See, I maps, think there you go. Oh, maps. Really want location accuracy. Thanks. So it's. Proper multitasking. Yeah. Right in. Finally. It shows me the location. I can follow another link and you see maps adjust. I'm able to just stay focused right here in these two apps side by side. 
And let's say I want to now work on note or notes full screen. That actually, like, right that like in itself to notes. me makes, like, the yeah, iPad much more worth it now. What's new? Because I feel like without that, you couldn't. Oh, no. For me, anyways, I've always wanted that. And I'm just going to buy, add an item here to buy a new uh, ice chest. There we go. But, you know, on second thought, I think I want to, I should probably borrow one. So I'm just going to take two fingers down on the keyboard and just swipe over here. I can reposition the cursor like that, tap and make a selection. It's like finally. I don't know, like, because all the rumors were, like, saying how Apple was going to make this iPad Pro, you know, like a bigger screen, and they could do, like, multitasking. Seems like it was literally a capable, the hardware has always been capable of it. They just, yeah, they just needed to plug in the software. I mean, let me have a look on the specs on, uh, on my old database, see how much RAM the iPad's got. Yeah, I think it's, is it two? It's two gigs, yeah. Yeah, everybody. It'll it's even, been plenty. I mean, even yeah. the guy at M so MK just video. said that this makes it nine thousand more times <laughs> useful. Everybody's now, often when I'm happy watching about a this. Video, I may decide I want to look something up or check something or maybe even get a notification. <laughs> I was not on the watch, iPad. Is Windows eight point one? <laughs> there you go. There you go. I have picture in picture. Video. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Do you know how many revisions there were without having this that so many people wanted? I know. Of course, resize the pip if I want. Oh, that's nice. Like this. I can move it around the screen so it's out of the way. That's what I'm nice. On. I can even move it off the side. Sometimes I just want to listen for a while while Oops. I work. And of course, it stays with me wherever I go. Oh, that's back. great right there. And then when I'm done, on the home screen? It's pretty cool. Yeah. And that is what it has. So let's talk about the viral player. Take my money. I want to buy an iPad. <laughs> you already have one. No, I sold mine. So oh, you sold it? Yeah, I sold it a couple months ago. That's available on iPhone as well. On iPad, we have slide over. Last year, actually, not even a couple months ago. Side, last year. You can tap and enter split view for simultaneous live two apps. Um, and of course, picture in picture. Because I wanted to, uh, I sold it because I thought by now there would be a new iPad coming out, you know? Yeah. And now they just did this. To work great on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. Well, that carries over just like this. Oh, that's good. Twitter came in and was able to do it just in minutes. It was really incredible. At least the developers don't have to go all crazy. It's available for the iPad Air, Air 2. Mini, mini 2 mini, and mini, mini 3, three. as is picture-in-picture. Picture. And our most powerful split view is available on our most powerful iPad, the iPad Air 2. Where does it I love that. Okay. Let's limit it to the, to the most expensive iPad. Yeah. Uh, they, snuck that, they snuck that one in there. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe that's going to do with the hardware, I guess. But of course, we've also focused on the foundation. Security. In performance. As you saw earlier on El Capitan with OS X, we've taken the core frameworks that we use for drawing on the system, core animation and core graphics, and we've put them on top of metal. We're seeing great acceleration. Metal. 0.6 times improvements in animations and scrolling. And a Hello to all the eight viewers out there. Usage. Right now, they're still going over. Right now, it's all covering now, iOS 9. We focused on real-world use cases and optimized them iOS 9 actually now does multitasking for the iPad. For the iPad Air 2 yeah. only. Proper multitasking. You think they would even bring, you think they would even bring that to the 6? They could bring it to the 6 Plus technically, right? That thing's huge. They could probably do it to all of them, but they want you to buy the Air 2. Yeah. The 6 Plus is huge. So. Well, now, in iOS 9, we give you a single switch in what we call low power mode. And it pulls levers that you didn't even know existed. And is able to extend battery life for an additional three hours of okay. typical use on top of that additional hour. It's really great. You just claimed another three hours of battery life, is that what he said? Yeah. Now with security, we want to protect okay. our users' data on device and in the cloud. And so we're bringing two-factor authentication and making it easy for everyone to protect their data in iCloud. And with software update, we want everyone to get to iOS 9. Okay. And so You're going to release today for free. <laughs> the architecture for our over-the-air updates, and uh -huh. we've been able to reduce the amount of free space you need 
to get to iOS. Oh, that's good. From the 4.6 <laughs> gigs that it took to get to iOS 8 down to just 1.3. So we think everyone oh, that's, can get to iOS 8. That's like a cool technical thing. Like if you're a geek, you know that's mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of stuff. So iOS 9, intelligence throughout the system, Apple Pay. Think when do you think iOS 10 is dropping next month? Apps, like notes. Sorry? Uh, when do you maps, think the drop date will be July? All new news apps and incredible features now for iPad. Summer. Well, yeah, I guess next month, yeah. To the foundation. See. Now, all this iOS coming? 9 is a great when? release for our users. And once again, be available. it's a fantastic release for all of our the developers. Bringing a ton of new features. And and gaming APIs. I always do a quick scan of all these things that they put up. Yeah, sometimes they always have some crazy stuff and you're just hitting some good stuff in there that they're not even talking about. Or downloads to exactly the subset of resources needed for that user's device, so you're able to get uh, take less space on device. It's really great. Mm -hmm. You know when it comes to shortcut bar, enhanced sprite kit, scene kit, and metal, and introduced three new frameworks. Yes, gameplay, bottle eye, replay kit. Replay kit, Duncan. Obstacle, obstacle, obstacle. Oh my god. Model IO to provide beautiful lighting on your <laughs> I love how these icons are so cool, but they're all for like, I mean, you never see these icons, really. Yeah. They're just icons specifically for the dev stuff. And share it. It's really great. Health kit. Health kit has been on fire. And so we've continued, well, we added water, actually. I feel like the biggest thing so far for me was just the iPad thing. We're <laughs> I want to hear about the music streaming service. Health metrics to be tracked. For instance, hydration, UV exposure. Cook still hasn't taken the stage, right? Yeah, I just noticed. This guy's been on it for quite a while. <laughs> I just saw menstruation on that chart, and then it quickly like, went away. Thermometers, locks, and lights. And now in iOS 9, we're adding support in for window shades. shades. Window shades, Duncan. We can instance, open our window shades. Holy shade. crap. Motion sensors. And we're adding Who would have thought I wanted to open my shutters? 24 <laughs> shutters, I don't have shades. Most importantly, we're allowing you to access your home remotely and securely via iCloud. So no matter via where the you iCloud. Are, oh my god, you're going to give your house up to Apple. I can close your window shades. Oh, I, I blocked my house by uh, iCloud, so my house is pretty secure. It's backed up to the cloud, my house. <laughs> you know, I have Touch ID on all my phones now. Um, so <laughs> I was at a party it was last week when I first got back, right? Right. <laughs> this guy passes out with his iPhone in his hand, right? So I was like, telling my friend, I was like, watch this. I used his hand when he was passed out to unlock his phone, erase wow. the fingerprints, and then put mine in. <laughs> wow. And it works. Like, it's the, it's so crazy. And start experiencing CarPlay effortlessly. CarPlay. I've never used CarPlay at all. But, I mean, that's because my car is, like, has it, it has an aux button with no aux in it. Finally, let's talk about Swift. Swift. Let's talk about it. Is Where's Swift? Coding I language? I forgot what it is. I think no. it's coding. It was that important last year. I forgot about it. <laughs> Whoa. So much colors. Well, now we're stepping on the gas this year with Swift. Oh, now, Swift, Swift 2. Oh, shit, son. They should have called it got two against it. I thought they were going to go with Swifter. Like, I really... Swift 2, we have an all-new optimization Swift. It's especially great for complex applications and object-oriented programming that we call whole module optimization, and the results are really <laughs> I love when Jobs would talk about that sort of stuff, and he'd be like, I don't know what it is, but it works. <laughs> yeah. An elegant new error handling model. The ability to see your Oh, it's app-testable. Oh, man. And the feature that I think the great thing about Jobs as a presenter is he didn't know a lot of the stuff too, and he didn't pretend to. So like the same way we don't yeah. know a lot about the stuff, he's just like, whatever that is, it, it works. Programming language, the one that we will all be doing application and systems programming on for 20 years to come. Ooh, he said 20 years. Should be everywhere and used by everyone. Oh, is he open sourcing it? So we're going to be doing something really big. Open sourcing. Today, we're announcing that Swift will be open source. What? What? 
Listen to those developers go wild. Wow. Yay. That's totally like a non Apple move, though. That right? is a non Apple move. Yeah. Standard libraries for iOS, OS X, and Linux. Okay, wow, that's actually that's, that's by cute. the end of the year. So that's Swift, and that is iOS nine. We're doing a developer beta. You guessed it today. Okay. And for the first time for a major iOS release, a public beta. So sign up now at beta.apple. Oh, go go everybody! Kill the, the page. Beta, comes out in July. Two <laughs> dos. Pointed out a free upgrade in the fall, and. IOS 9. So iOS 9 is not coming to the full, dude. By iOS 8. We're not Four. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be a free upgrade, obviously. but And it goes back to the 4S. I really appreciate your Whoa. Have a fantastic Thank you. That's, that's huge. Okay, he killed it. Wow, so the 4S is still technically being supported. They really want to go back there. Huh. Better, I keep on refreshing this page. Users. And iOS 9 takes it to an even greater level with incredible new apps and intelligence built right into iOS. And as an avid iPad user, I'm also incredibly excited about how far it extends the iPad experience as we continue to lead in the post PC era. I really feel like that's going to make like, yeah, like the iPad much more useful for people. That dramatically improves the experience and the user experience and the performance of the Macintosh. And of course, Swift. Now let's get to the music Swift streaming service. Swift provides a single language for you to create apps for both OS X and iOS. There's really so many possibilities for you to use these platforms and these tools to create unbelievable apps that will link business and healthcare, and education, and really everything in our lives. There's seemingly no limit to what you can do. And of course, underpinning this, the App Store is very key. It's hard to believe that the App Store was launched only seven years ago. Dang, it's that's true. That is, that is kind of crazy. And I'm happy to announce that the App Store recently passed a major milestone. One billion something. The App Store has passed 100 million. Oh, gosh. Million Never mind. I was way off. <laughs> <laughs> By uh, like a 99 billion margin. <laughs> the rate of growth. That is ridiculous. Wow, that is huge. The industry has never seen anything like this before. The App Store has forever changed Jeez. software and software distribution. Imagine if those are all just paid apps and they're only like a dollar. We've now paid out thirty billion dollars. Oh to my gosh! That's crazy. The App Store continues to be the most profitable app marketplace on the planet. Now, we could not be more proud of the work that you are doing. More and more, developers are transforming, mm -hmm. empowering, and reimagining the very important things that we do in our daily lives. We've made a video about your incredible impact. Dang, I feel ridiculous. Oh, no, a video. In my expectations thing, I was like, iOS 9 is just like stability fixes and stuff like that, but they actually released a lot of stuff. Well, yeah, were your predictions correct so far? Everything as far as the proactive, I didn't even touch on the iPad multitasking. Like, I didn't think that was going to be a thing. Like, I really thought they were just going to be anyone. Yeah, I think everybody thought they were going like, to release a, a, a hardware solution to that. But it still does come with that caveat of you have an iPad Air too. Well, yeah, yeah, it's true. It's not true multi no, multi tasking for everybody. It's limited to the iPad Air too. You can do the split screen on the other iPads thing. 
but not the true multitasking. Yeah. So I'm going to quickly switch to you so that Me? I don't get uh, I don't get this ad recall. I'll, I'll act like the ad's doing, or I'll, I'll describe it. Okay. Uh, there's sky, there's lights, yeah. uh, there's a kid's walking, uh, there's a kid with his phone out. Yeah, he's using that strap. That uh, someone's running down the beach, looking at their Apple Watch, that's just light lit up. Someone's on their iPhone, someone's in a car, someone's in an office, another person in an office, another person in an office, someone on the iPad, someone yeah. on the iPhone, someone on the Apple Watch, someone on the iPhone again, someone walking in front of a bus, someone who's on a bus, someone who's talking James Man Yika. <laughs> um, who's like waving his arms around and talking about stuff? Yeah. Uh, there's a guy on a bike. Uh, this crossing a bridge. There's like a look of New York, and it says in 2008, Apple launches the Apple Store with 500 apps. Now it's got 1,000, uh, 1.5 million. Yeah. I can't read numbers. <laughs> person with a phone looking out a window. Hey, it's Instagram, dude. It's the dude from Instagram. Kevin's Australian. The iPhone made photography universally accessible. That's true. Yeah, I'm not even gonna like what you just said there. Like, I cannot. I feel like everybody uses it now. That. that doesn't need an app. People want data at their fingertips. They want personalized experiences. They want power over their money. And it's not just for banking, it's for every industry. So the reason I'm just flipping off the ad for now just because this always these ads always get caught up by YouTube, even though we're just commentating over them and they flag them. <laughs> I always have to go through an appeal process. So Duncan's the ad right now. He's just watching. Yeah, I, I haven't got much to say. It's just pretty yeah. much what I said before, over again, except with different people. Blah blah blah. This yeah, is really good. We impact a lot of people's lives, blah blah blah. Not just convenience. Your phone is your most personal device, blah, blah. You can change everything in every industry, blah, blah. <laughs> it all starts with an idea, blah, blah, blah. If you had told me when I was a kid that you would be able to write an idea and then film that idea and then distribute it to the world. J.J. Abrams. You also put in your pocket, I would never stop laughing. And I would have thought you were insane. The App Store gives everyone access to incredible. Do, do, do. And there's an incredible generation of filmmakers. I was looking for things to add to my little database, and the only thing I've got in there is El Capitan. I'm disappointed. In your what? For hardware. In my little database that I'm making, you know. Oh, first. What I can add to that is El Capitan. There's nothing else I can put in there. iOS 9, Jupyter iOS 9. That's a mobile operating system. It's not a. It's not a PC. Oh yeah. There's no, there's no hardware. I'm disappointed. What's a new yeah. kit? So Something that makes me want to go out and get it. <laughs> I do like the iPad Mini though. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. I want to. I haven't tried that form factor personally yet. I think it's like that happy medium, you know, size-wise. It is. Yeah. Just iOS that let it down for me when I had it, but then I guess I shouldn't be saying that on this stream. <laughs> what did you, you say? I was I just wasn't a fan of iOS. I I I'm sort of uh, I guess I'm an Android faithful. Something I, I shouldn't really be admitting on an iPhone event. <laughs> I feel like the tablets though, like like where Android is caught up in the phone space, I still feel like they're really lacking in the tablet space. I can imagine, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Did you feel that, Mark? Okay. That market right there, like for the people with like accessibility issues. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely. Huge, and like I, I, I haven't like, I never really saw that. Like you see it in the commercial and stuff. But I think I, I forgot when I was recently in the Philippines, I saw somebody using something like that with the iPad, and I was like, wow, like that is like literally like a huge game changer. iPhone and iPad watch enable so many incredible things there's so much that can still change and evolve 
due to the power of applications. See, is the iPad now good enough to have all day battery life? Like literally all day battery life. And I my my iPad was still good enough for all day battery life when I had mine. Yeah. And I'm talking like super early in the morning till very late at night. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. Without missing a beat. Especially and you're doing stuff on it all day. Kids, no, yeah, I think everybody carries a charge around. Like when I was in the Philippines, my cousin has an iPad Mini, and she's always playing Minecraft. So like that thing dies like midday. Yeah, that's that's what I want. I want like proper all day. No, no, all day battery life sitting on on a desk with the yeah. screen off. All day battery life. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. Like not having to look at the battery icon at all because you know it's gonna last. Are they gonna mention these music streaming servers? They have to. Yeah, so there's no way he's gonna end it up. You have changed so many parts of all of our lives. I don't know, maybe that comes in a separate one, because does that affect developers? I f it has to. They have to talk about it. Seems itself. like they have definitely tailored WWDC more towards next opportunity to programming and software. Up, That's the go. opportunity here go. to bring native apps. Up. Oh, the watch. watch. I forgot all about the watch. <laughs> watch OS. That's what they're calling it. For us, this is a giant moment. I feel like this is something they should have totally done, right? Like, it's literally been, what, like two months since it's been released? So. So, like, why didn't they just do this when it came out? Well, we already know it had Watch OS. It's in my specs, I believe, for the Apple Watch. But in terms of native apps, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with it. Technology designed for the wrist. And we believe by opening up the platform. Is he wearing an Apple Watch edition? I'd hope he would be. <laughs> no, it didn't look like it was a white band on his wrist. I know he has like a red, like a spe special red band or something like that. And it's pretty amazing that today we're already talking about the next version of the watch OS. Okay, I was about to say, if you said we're talking about the next version of the watch, I said that's not exciting. Yeah, already. Yeah. <laughs> Edition 2. That is not $50, great. $50,000. Yeah. To tell you all about it, I'd like to invite up my friend and colleague, Kevin Lynch. Kevin? Okay, you're sharing the stage all day, every day. Hello. So we're moving really he, fast he looks like a Bill Gates. I'm super to Young, I don't know. He reminds me of Bill Gates or some reason. As well as the powerful new abilities for app development. Let's start with the enhancements. The enhancements include great new timepiece functions, improvements in communication, as well as in health and fitness, and support for the new capabilities in Apple Pay and Maps and Siri. Let's start with timepiece. Timepiece. Now already Apple Watch is a is a really great timepiece, most customizable one in the world, and a lot of that is due to the watch faces and how you can change them. But well, we're adding some new watch faces in Watch OS 2. That includes a beautiful new photos face. You'll be able to select any photo that you have and create a watch okay. face on that, that should have been like a default, default thing. That's always a default image. thing. <laughs> like, let me use my own elbow. pictures. And every time you raise your wrist, you'll see a different photo from your elbow show up. It's a great way of seeing your photos throughout the day. Now we went a little further with this. We shot some photos ourselves. We did some time lapse photography in some beautiful locations around the world. That's the nifty. Works, you raise your wrist to you see this 24 hour shoot that we've done in different locations. And it will be your current time there. So if it's noon, you'll see noon in London. If it's at night, you'll see Big Ben all lit up. And we've done this not only for London, but some other locations too. You can choose from hmm. Pong, Mac That's Pace, a cool little thing. Place in the Sierra, it's like a nifty thing. Just New York, nothing crazy on it. Cool. So a great way of seeing some really beautiful imagery, both your own and these time-lapse images on your wrist. It would be good to see some stuff that bases itself on the time. Show the information something that... On your watch face. With he's, he's, yeah, he said yeah, he said the time-lapse will do that. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like, to see more stuff like that. Yeah, that yeah. That would be more cool yeah. to have the watch, because then throughout the day, you'd have something different to look at. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, I definitely agree. <laughs> Still think complication sounds like a bug. Yeah, no, why is that called complications? I have no idea. See the state of your home control system. Look at the charge. I actually have a friend right now who's in London. I thought about. I was thinking, but he was telling me he was there for an internship, and I was thinking, I was like, dang, I wish I would have went down there with him because you're down there. It's gonna be really, really cool. 
And this will work not only on the module, My friend who he, he goes to Tokyo, right? For um, yeah. his girlfriend's roommate, her, her mom is the one who owns Trend Micro. You know? Wow. Like literally yeah. owns Trend Micro with her brother. So it's like it's a huge company. Their headquarters is actually in London. It's crazy. And what if you could go forward in time and actually see that information update on your watch face? Well, there you go. Actually, I don't know. Never mind. It's something with time relevant travel. to something else. And you'll be able to rotate your digital crown, and you can go both forward and backward through time. And the information. What's the Volkswagen button for? Yeah. Let's Why is that logo here. there? So I've got uh, my, my meeting in the middle there, and weather, and the charge level of a car, and time in London. When I rotate the crown, you can see it's changing the time, and it's showing me things that are coming up. Now, we know that a really popular one here might be the stock application, but we haven't cracked that one yet. This so reminds me of the Pebble Time. Working on it. <laughs> the stock complications. What do you say? This reminds me of the Pebble Time. I, they were, they were, but they're using the crown instead. So the Pebble Time is where you where you press the buttons uh, uh, really above and below the app button, and it goes right. backwards in time to tell you what's happening and forwards. Mm. It looks like this is a direct rip off of that. I see, I see. I had no idea. Now, we also thought. What would be a great experience for the watch when it's on your nightstand and charging? Well, we've come up with a new user interface for this in watchOS 2 called Nightstand Mode. So when you put your watch on its side and it's charging, you get this beautiful display now of the time. And of course, you can set an alarm that will wake you up in the morning, and it will go something like this. So a beautiful little al bedside alarm clock. It's supposed to wake me up? And you're off crush. Uh, so a really fun way. <laughs> You're very good. Nice Ten time times louder. Off. So those are just some of the great new timepiece functions that are coming in WatchOS 2. Let's look at communication. Now already Apple Watch is great at communicating with your friends. You just press the side button and see your, your 12 friends that you've selected. Now we realize that some of you have more than 12 friends. Uh, so now in WatchOS 2 you can actually have different sets of friends you can select. And you can add a friend right from your watch by pressing the plus side and add a friend right there. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Make a phone call or send a message or send a drawing with digital touch. And now in WatchOS 2, you'll be able to use multiple colors in your drawings. So you can draw I still think digital colors, touch is a funny little color, feature. <laughs> Even my drawings are starting to look better now uh, with this. It reminds me of like the doodles in WhatsApp. Yeah. Or whatever, that you, that you send once and then do it again. Yep. And with the phone, you can already take phone calls in your watch. We're now going to support FaceTime audio. So you'll get really high fidelity calls right in your wrist. Finally. And with health and fitness, already Apple Watch is a great partner for health and fitness. That's the only like the main reason I think smartwatches like I want to see smartwatches integrated, like health and fitness. On the watch. You can use them wherever you are. And your workouts with these apps will contribute directly to your all day activity. Should be really great. So if you go on a bike ride, it will count. Finally. We're also enabling Siri to start workouts. So you can just raise your wrist and say, hey Siri, start a 30 minute run in the park, and it will start the workout app and get it going for you. You can also do things like say, go for a 300 calorie bike ride or go for a five mile run. And it will just start the workout without you having to touch the watch at all. That's and when you good. achieve something, there's some beautiful new achievements that you'll see that look like this. They spin right in. They're beautiful. You can play with them in 3D on your watch. They're engraved on the back now with your name. Uh, and you can share these with people over messages or face Facebook or Twitter. Achievements. The gamification. <laughs> with Apple Pay, uh, you saw some of the great new support we're bringing for store cards and rewards cards. We're supporting that in the watch. So you can select a store card and use it right in your watch in a merchant terminal just by waving it in front of the the store stand there, and then with the wallet coming to watch, all of your rewards cards will be right there, and you can also use those right from your watch as you're doing purchases. With transit, we're supporting, of course, the mass transit capabilities and maps now, so you'll be able to okay. see the transit lines on your wrist. You can actually see the departure times or different stations you're near, and when you're navigating, you'll get stuff Board by stuff train. about getting through the different mass transit that you use. With Siri, we're continuing to add new domains for Siri. In watchOS 2, we're enabling Siri to get new mass transit directions, like bus directions to the ferry building. 
can look like this. You can just start navigating. Uh, or you can control things in your home with Siri. So you can say things like, hey Siri, set the dinner scene. And it will talk to any home kit enabled devices in your house and set the lights just how you want them. Is that cool? It's going to be great. Well, another great thing is you can actually ask for any of the glances you have. So you can say, hey Siri, show me the Instagram glance, and it will show up right in your watch face. And this could be a glance you don't even have currently selected. It's a great way to show information from third-party apps right there in Siri. So those are just some of the highlights of what's coming in watchOS 2. We think it's going to be a really, really great update to the watch. Woo! Now that's not all. Now that's not all. That's not all. We also, of course, focused on what we can do for developers. And already, uh, out of the gate on day one, you can build apps for Apple Watch using something called WatchKit. And that has enabled over uh, many thousands of apps now to be created for Apple Watch. And these apps today function by relying on your phone. So you might have, for example, an app on your watch, and the user interface runs on your phone, and the user interface is on your watch. The Apple but all the is logic your phone. Your app today runs on your phone. Well, with native apps, you'll be able to actually move that logic to the watch so both the UI and the logic are there, all run locally, Fine. performance will be great, responsiveness will be great. It's going to be a great new frontier for apps and Apple Watch with native app support. Woo! Clap it up, developers. Clap Finally. Up. And when you're actually wandering away from your phone sometimes, your apps will be able to communicate directly with the network, with known Wi-Fi networks, to get the information you want wherever you are. When oh, you're that was a Google announcement recently. All right. Some watches have Wi-Fi support. I feel like all smartwatches smart need to. They need to, yeah. They need to power themselves. It's not a smartwatch if it's like uh, solely so dependent. It's tethered to your freaking phone, yeah. Possible now in watch OS but all of them are, with the exception so of Pebble, the right? Or oh, no, but yeah. Really want to access the microphone. Yeah, Pe the Pebble is um, tied to the phone. Yeah. Access the microphone right on the watch. And bring that audio right into your app. We also heard you want to play audio out of the speaker. You can do that. Watch OS 2. No, you can no, you don't. The watch speaker, or you can play audio. Well, I know how that is. You've seen my review on my one. <laughs> this one plays out the speaker. It's okay, I guess, but I've never really had a use case where I want to sit there and listen. Access to health kit. We've definitely heard that. You now will have access to native health kit on the watch, including streaming heart rate. That just kind of looks like that, doesn't it? Like yeah, it does. Strava. Oh, yeah, while you're Which model is that again? This is the U8. This is like a generic Chinese <laughs> one. Which the batteries run out of. I don't know if this will ever start up again. <laughs> Hopefully. You'll be able to access the accelerometer so you can get movement data. So, for example, from the oh. golf app here, you can check out your golf swing uh, tempo as you're swinging the, the golf club with your watch on. Tapic Engine is one of the things that we've really done a lot of focused work on to make it a great experience on the wrist. And we are bringing access to the Taptic Engine to you for your app development. It's literally been like two months. I feel like, why didn't they all just, I feel like the watch would have been way more well received if they introduced this stuff like from the get go. Yeah, considering there's such a delay on the actual Apple Watch coming out, wasn't it? Yeah. It's a long time before that came out. I don't know, I mean, maybe they used it too early. early. Maybe this shit is like really ridiculously hard. You know, no yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, but if you've got your high-paying developers, I'm sure it's a... Uh... Yeah. ...like changing the temperature here, just by rotating the crown like this. Super easy way to interact with your watch. So we've done a great job bringing a lot of access... This to keynote's definitely longer than the average like ones, but typically... Because it's quite long. ...covering a lot of ground here. iOS, OS 10, Apple Watch, Apple Pay, watch here, and uh, I still think they're going to do the music uh, service. Connected to the display here, so this little cable. All right. So let's start by looking at um, three examples of new features in WatchOS 2, and then I'll show you three apps. Let's start with uh, making a photo face. So I'll just press my digital crown here, go to the home screen. Here's my photos. You can see I've got a bunch of photos on here. I can zoom in with the crown and pan around. Okay. And I can pick a photo that might make a nice watch face like that one. But I want to zoom in and crop it a little more. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and move it over like that to get it just right. I think that's going to make a great watch face. So I just force touch, choose create watch force face. Force touch? That sounds so weird. Watch face. Mm -hmm. 
forcibly touching it. Let's look at time travel. I'll go over to my modular face. We've got some more information here. So I've got flight times here on United. You can see the temperature, my VW car's charge level, and time in London. So I just wrote. Oh, I see. It's the charge level of the VW car. See times updating. So your electric car. Uh, 45, and I wonder if my charge level will be enough to get to the airport. So if I just keep going forward in time here. Oh, that's interesting. Let's get that done for the Teslas. In fact, you can keep going and look at boarding time and arrival time for your flight. So you can get a great preview of your day just by rotating the crown right on the watch face. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, how accurate would that be? It's one that's very accurate, surely. Yeah. Well, I'm going to reply to email now and watch OS2. So here's a here's an email that's just come in. That would be a cool thing to have, like on a phone, to see how like how long your battery is before it runs out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right like so advancing it with everything you're running now or something. Like yeah, exactly. Reply, I would love to. Come on, watch. He's uh, making yeah. a message there. It's created a response. I just press send, and it now goes off to Mars. Yeah, it's still a bit delayed. There's a, a yeah. bit of a delay there. Wait, what the hell? I hate how my Twitter app, my Twitter app always... You saw it slides a second ago. I'll show you how that works. Like if I scroll down my Twitter app on my timeline, like it has to, I have to keep on yeah, scrolling up when new tweets come in. This, this control right here responds right actually. away. You can see the apple yeah. very quickly. Tweet decks like scrolling down for me. Right here, that we were looking at before. If I just rotate the crown, you can see how responsive it is as I go up and down through temperatures here. Really, really cool. I'll get it nice and warm for me, so when I go down there, it'll be nice and toasty. Okay, turn it on. All right, I've got confirmation that it actually enabled that on my car now. Now, access to the mic is going to be really helpful in apps. And some of the apps that will really benefit are communication apps like WeChat. A lot of messages sent to the There you go. Now it's scrolling to the top. Holy crap. Let's see how that'll work now. It's a with preference. Too. See, I've got some messages here. There's one from Becky. And I can reply here just by pressing the reply button. And you can see I've got a microphone now, so I can do an audio response. Let's do that. That sounds great. So you can see as I was recording it, it got the audio levels of my voice, and now it sent that to Becky. I can also reply with stickers here. There's different categories of them. And with the digital crown now, oh God, that's a huge thing in Japan. UI, I can just flip through recent uh, stickers and pick one quickly that I like, and then just send that one as well. So very fast to interact now uh, with all these new controls you have available in watchOS 2. Now let's look at the Vine glance. Uh, Vine is a oh, no, Vine. video. <laughs> And uh, the format is really perfect for the watch face. So here's a recent one on Vine. <laughs> Let's video playing back right on the watch face. So those are just some examples of what you can do now with watchOS 2. And I'm super excited to see what all of you guys do with all this stuff. I'm guessing this is coming full as well. Yeah, I guess so. Great new enhancements coming as well as some super powerful. They tend to like it all together. And we've been working really hard on this, and I'm really happy to say that this stuff is all available to you Tomorrow. today to start building these native apps. Developer beta today, yeah, but to everyone else. Just six weeks from our launch, it's unbelievable, and then it'll be available in the fall to everyone. Oh, Scott, I should have put on that. So this has been a great adventure. We're just getting started here. So you don't know what fall is. It could be August. It could be October. They always do that, though. Always, always, always. We're really excited to have Apple Watch out in the world, and we can't wait to see what you do with Watch OS. We couldn't be more excited about how developers and users will use this powerful ecosystem of both products and platforms. Three amazing platforms. Why is everybody tweeting one more thing? Really are limitless. Because <laughs> they want one more thing, probably. Say it. He's going to say it. Before we close this morning, we do have. Yes! <laughs> Ode to my boy. <laughs> That's definitely a streaming service. You know, we love music. And music is 
Music is such an important part of our lives. Oh, uh, it's music. We had a long relationship with music at Apple. The few. Music has had a very rich history of change, some of which we played a part in. We had a great video about the history of music. I'd like to play it for you this morning. Oh, the one more thing line. Man. This guy tweeted way too late. And this is this is this could just be the iTunes radio thing. Think streaming service or radio? Either or. Could be. I mean, I think they tie in both pretty much together. Oops, I'm playing Zad. I forgot. <laughs> Back to you. Mm. Uh, so. There's people dancing, there's iPods, there's Cowboy. people got a hat, there's twerking. someone twerking, uh, DJing. You got somebody twerking. <laughs> someone jumping around, some graphics, and now it's black screen, it's 2015, Apple Music. I'm there waiting you go. for somebody to tweet about Apple the twerking. Apple Music, that's what this shit is. Today we're announcing... Twerking at the Apple, Apple event. The next chapter in music, and I know you are going to love it. Will change the way that you experience music forever. Apple Music. To tell you more about it, I'd like to bring up someone. How many times have Apple tried to do a music service though? Than anyone I know. Like have uploading they? your music. They've tried to. Well, yeah, like uploading your music and doing their own version of it and offering out that. John Lennon. Yes. Yeah, you know what I mean? Or do you mean? Uh, I guess some. In terms of streaming, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. But I know what you mean. I know what you Please mean. Join me in welcoming. Jimmy Ivey. Oh, whoa. Jimmy. Jimmy. Damn. They're having him present it. Wow. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Wow, it's really an honor to be here. I'm here because in 2003, the record industry was a ball of confusion. We had Napster. We had LimeWire. We had BitTorrent. This giant invader from the north, technology. I'm looking at my guys saying, well, what do we do with this? So I go up to Apple and I see Steve Jobs and Eddie Q, and they show me something brilliant and groundbreaking, a simple, elegant way to buy music online. iTunes. iTunes. I'm like, wow, the ads are real. These guys really do think different. <laughs> so, <laughs> they can help move culture the same way that art moves culture technology and art it's kind of became a billionaire because of apple at least at apple so now 2015 or maybe not a billion music, music industry is a fragmented mess hello you say you want to stream music how are you doing yeah. man thanks for stopping by the you stream we're still video? tuning in it's near the end up. hey dude Oh, they're actually showing the other competitors on screen, huh? So, so right now we're doing the one more thing. Oh, wow, that's small fight. Wow. I said, guys, can we build a bigger and better ecosystem? With the elegance and simplicity that only Apple can do. One I want to see what it looks like. Around music. I think the only way they can even and remotely that, compete with Spotify and stuff so proud of is by getting the better so deals hard. that they have. But yeah, making it cheap. Apple Music. I think it'll be ten dollars a month, like Spotify. But I have think a free version that's ad supported. 
Yeah, if they can get the deals, because like you imagine, like they're already huge with iTunes. Right? Everybody's on iTunes. Every. Yeah. If you can get those same partnerships and deals, I think that's the only way you can remotely try to overthrow. And yet, there needs to be a place where music can be treated less like digital bits. So right now, they're showing an ad for Apple's music streaming service, showing a whole bunch of artists, album artwork, music videos. Not just the top tier artists, but the kids in their bedrooms too. I mean, if you think about it, the last big two times Apple has done music well, with, with iPod and iTunes, right? Pretty much. And that's what we said. After. Yep, very much. On Apple Music, all the ways you love music can now live together. Stream from the millions of songs on iTunes anytime and on demand, along with handpicked playlists, recommendations. And all that's great and breaking is music wow. right now. So it's very iTunes esque, obviously. And broadcasting every day is Apple's first 24 7 worldwide radio station. Live in over 100 countries, each one is anchored by Zane Lowe in LA. Beats one worldwide, always on. Yeah, they hired that guy. That guy's he, He's from here, UK, right? Wow. Zane Lowe. He's I don't know. I don't, yeah, I've heard. Yeah, Zane Lowe. Yeah, he's already one, I think. <laughs> From Iraq? Oh, that's cool. Hey, thanks for tuning in. What time is it over there? It must be. Iraq. 9:51 p.m. Well, thanks for tuning in. Music that's not in that catalog yet. Direct from the artist. The event's about to wrap up here in a second. Artists. Build an ecosystem we hope can start to provide the tools to grow, nurture, and sustain careers. One I had no idea that's what Trent Reznor looked like. Thought of music. So basically, they're jumping straight into competition with Spotify and everybody else. And that's Apple Music and the great Trent Reznor. It's all the ways you love music, all in one place. And that place is almost in a billion hands around the world already. One app, one single app. iTunes. iTunes. Apple Music is three things. It's a revolutionary music service. Hmm. Blah, blah, blah. A revolutionary music service curated by the leading music experts who we, uh, we help handpick. These people are going to help you with the most difficult question in music. When you're listening to a playlist, what song comes next? The only song that's as important as the one you're listening to at that moment is the one that follows it. Now, picture this. Oh, man. We're in a special moment. You're exercising or some other special moment. <laughs> right, Dre? He exercises a lot. <laughs> and your heart's pumping. And you're about to turn up the reps. And the next song comes on. And buzz kill. Now, you may ask why that happened. It happened because it was probably programmed by an album. Ping 2.0, is that what it's called, Duncan? What was that? You remember Ping? You need a human touch. Ping. That's why it happened. That was what it was called, right? The right, right, song, the right playlist. What are we talking about here? iTunes Ping. Do you remember that? I think yeah, I know there's a social network that was attached to it, right? Yeah, that failed dramatically. Was that Ping? Yeah, that's what I forgot about. I just saw somebody tweet about that. This is what we're gonna do. Let's build the first ever. Do you know what else is 24/7 global radio? What? All the other radio stations on iTunes. Yeah, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Not based on. They an official them. radio station. They're spending guap. They're hiring like artists and stuff, like Drake and that to host it. I have no idea how they're gonna do that. A station that has only one master, music itself. I said, why do artists always have the greatest ideas that are practically impossible to execute? So it's just a, a one radio station that's endorsed by Apple, basically. I guess. I have no idea. Dreams be realized. So we built the station, and it's a music lover's dream. 
If you love great music without any restrictions, you're going to love Apple Music's Beats One. Finally, Connect, a fantastic way for established and new and even unsigned artists to connect directly with music lovers anywhere. This is going to be very powerful for musicians. And imagine being an up and coming artist and being able to share your music on the biggest music platform in the world that people already have Apple Music. Remember, this is an ecosystem. It's built to fit together. I, I've been a bit embarrassed watching this. I don't know why. You upload your music to Apple. He's not a great presenter. It doesn't look like he knows what he's talking about. So it looks like he's reading from a script. Real yeah, he definitely is. My great friend, he definitely has no... Uh, tell you how this all works together. But he's the guy that beats in on that. Like he knows his stuff, but he's just not a great presenter at all. Thank you, Jimmy. It's great to be here this morning with you. So Apple Music, it's a revolutionary music service. Is, it, is this the dude with the karaoke that was on earlier? Yes. Great new features from the guy that basically turned into their joke. <laughs> and also, your recently added albums and songs right across the top. Yeah, I'm tweeting. It's literally either a huge hit or failure. Like that's like it, it goes one or two ways. <laughs> or your iPhone are right here. Now, of course, you can search your music library, but now you can search and stream the millions and millions of songs that we have on iTunes. Now, in addition to my music, when you can stream and listen it's to any song you so want, you need a great place to start. And that's why we've created For You. For You recommends playlists and albums For that you. we think you're going to love. They're personalized to your taste. You know, a lot of apps are turning that way. Artists you love. Yeah, to get recommend like what we what we saw earlier with the news, where it's like we we suggest things that we think you'll like. Yeah, I think it's all, it's all trying to cater to you now, like everything relevant to content. Here you'll discover new artists and I guess it makes it more personal in a way. Along with the top charts and every one of our playlists, all human curated, available by genre or by activity. So when you think about the thing is, like competing with Spotify, you have everybody on Facebook making playlists. That's, that's the real people to experience that's the catalog of the world's music, and that is the revolutionary music service. Now let's talk about radio. The truth is, internet radio isn't really radio; it's just a playlist of songs. And so we wanted to do something really big. We wanted to create a worldwide live radio station broadcasting around the globe and we've done that with beats one it's the world's best radio station now needs the world's best voice and that's why we've hired zane low zane is a masterful they're definitely going for like the like, trying to get the talent aspect and to tell you more about it here is zane zane's huge i'm a music fan i play records what I love is watching a group of people react to a great record for the first time. When I play that record on the radio, the audience tell me, the timelines light up. My friends tell me, my phone lights up. up. They love it or they hate it, but it creates a debate. That's what good music on the radio does. When Apple first asked me to be yeah, a I've heard him on um, UK radio, music in front of the average, the unexpected, the undiscovered, the anticipated, the underrated. Their words move the needle. And that's what we're doing. We have real music fans running this place. We have great music DJs and incredible artists who are in definitely going for that town approach. Building real radio shows that are going to try to do online. that stuff. At the only place that can pull off an imaginative idea as big as this Apple. We're called Beats One. We're always on playing the music that we love. Oh. I don't know, man. So, it's interesting how they're doing it. They're marketing, marketing it as worldwide. Coming from New York, LA, and London. And that is radio. Next, we wanted to find a way to bring fans closer. This is the whole pink thing. Sorry, what were you saying? We call it Connect. I, just, uh, I don't know. It just seems like an internet radio station. That's it. Oh, yeah, pretty much, yeah. I think they're yeah they're they're just focusing on the aspect of like it's made by people who make music I guess. 
Now he's prolific and does a lot. And let me show you how it works with Connect. That sounds like the ultimate sales right marketing place. Great way to put advertisements out because you're going to everybody. If anything, in this case, they're like taking like huge shots at Title because Title is like. Artists can post and publish. Oh man, my computer almost restarted. Sorry. Uh, Title is like the one that's like really focused on like artists and tying the artists with their service and all that stuff. <laughs> And it's not just for one artist, but it's for all of the artists that you love. The heck? And to give you a little sense of what it's like to be an artist on Connect, I'd like to invite up a friend, Drake. Drake's on the stage. What? He's on the stage? Is he presenting? What is this? The fuck. What is this? This is history. What happened? This is WWDC. I know, they're like taking this. What is this? So many individuals that have changed the way. Go reading this. This just took, this just went from geek thing to fucking, I don't even know. Sorry to swear. It's just. in the rap world the internet. It's going to be huge this year. Honestly, in all seriousness, I came here today to share my story about the way technology changed what I do for a living. Um, what the heck? That's so crazy. People who go there just get to see them. Like, that's like uh, for them, like, they just got to see them. I always wondered if my city or even my country would have somebody. Break into the global music They're paying him. He's he's a he's a, he's a what do you call that? He's going to be a DJ um, for them. That's why. I mean, even myself, I tried to do it. This is because it's got an Afro logo on it. The towering. Oh yeah, the what the hell? The <laughs> littered with other. I didn't notice. It's like an apparel. It's it's improbable to think that every talented artist is going to get a shot to have their vision validated. And then. Is this is this going to be a? I mean, radio station, or are you going to be able to listen to it on anything? Myself. Got to be, uh, got to be anything, right? Any, anything when they can play our iTunes, music, essentially. And our music directly to the. I think. Um, and that was kind of the. Yeah, somebody put this ball like title. Really got, got noticed. I just read this on Twitter. Title is like for people who like are idolize the music, like the quality and all that, right? Right. Where I think this one, they're definitely more going for the people who idolize the artists and themselves. Cause it's like for the people who are like, for example, like Drake, he has a huge base, right? Like he's going to be a station, a DJ of his own station. So like people can tune into his station. I don't know whether or not like he's personally going to be curating that. Like that's hard to say, you know? Oh shit, son. You see he's got an Apple Watch edition on his wrist. Oh shit. Yeah, of course he does. Of course. Very simple, very easy place. I'd imagine. What a waste of money. You better have been given that. In your city. For those people, I, I mean, like, imagine. And this approach is how we broke in 2008. It's and a, it has been. We probably spent that like at a strip club. <laughs> so, you know. He's a way better presenter than the Iovine guy. <laughs> this comes at the perfect time for me. Given the uh, great success. Moving around a lot. Last that went directly Rolling around. This really. Uh, I, I, My sister is in front of Drake right now. I can see her. She just tweeted the picture. They can especially connect into what I'm doing next. I'm really excited about what I'm working on. And as an artist, I can say, for all those kids sitting at home, it's truly because apparently they're releasing exclusive albums for this. And um, this is something that that simplifies. He just shuffled his fucking coat. Sorry, I'm going to throw. Modern music consumer like you. So I hope you enjoy Apple Music. I hope you enjoy Connect. My name is Drake, and thank you for your time. Appreciate it. So what? He's gonna get his own station. Apparently, he's gonna be one of the big hosts. Yeah, like they've been hunting for him and Pharrell, I think. Thank you, Drake. And that is Connect. Now, I'd love to give you a demo of Apple Music, but before I start, I do want to wish Bill <laughs> a happy birthday. <laughs> hey! Who's whose birthday? Sure. Oh. There's that Burberry CEO. So, 
So let's go ahead and launch our new music app. You'll notice right away it's got a brand new UI, much simpler to use. Your recently added albums and songs right across the top. Let's play this. this <laughs> yeah, somebody's like, yo, how much is this going to cost? Nobody's. <laughs> no. Yeah, everyone's just like, how much? I'm pretty sure it'll be $10 a month. One of the things you'll notice, we have a new mini player across the bottom that always shows you what's playing. And if I tap on it, I get full screen and I can see the beautiful artwork, all the playback controls. Ooh. I can just swipe down and it disappears. Now, I like looking at my music by artists. It's really easy to do that too. I'll just tap on albums. They're smart though to get artists. people who they know are going to generate a lot of hype. Frankly. Yeah. First thing you'll notice is we had Like I just saw I'm, I'm seeing all these other like hip hop blogs now reblogging things about Drake. Goes away and you see a reset at the top. And no demo goes complete without playing this song. <laughs> Now, you not only get all of your Aretha Franklin songs in your music library, but you How do you think this affects all. iTunes? Do you think it, you what do you think that gap is between Apple people music, who, who stream music and who want to buy it? What the top song is, what the top Yeah, man, this is such an age-old thing. Ownership versus accessibility. Yeah. Do you want to access all the songs in the world but not actually own them? Or do you want to download stuff to put anywhere? I'm getting ready for tomorrow night. Not I honestly don't know. Because Spotify, Spotify is so popular. I feel like more and more with the wide availability of things, like people don't even need to own it or don't want it on locally on their device. Yeah. And uh, these are some of the songs that so they've are... got a price to it. They have to. All right, let's go ahead and play that. <laughs> I love Twitter. Right after all this happens, they're just making jokes about Title versus Apple. Because Title is owned by the rapper Jay Z. Ah. Everybody's like. Yo, Jay-Z and Drake just had a fallout now because <laughs> he's promoting the other service. It's very easy for me to reorganize it. Let's say I want to move Jealous back up. And now that'll be the next song that plays. It's that simple. Now that's great. The first time we go to For You, we want to find out a little bit about your musical taste. $10 a month. Ask you what genres you like. June 30th. Somebody just um, business wire said that they're reporting it now. How much is it? Ten dollars a month. Uh, oh, okay, so it's Mac, the same thing. iOS, Apple TV, and I PC, and Android. I don't know if this this is just a report from Business Wire. I don't know if that's a hundred percent. If that's for across, that'd be smart. And the songs that you purchased on iTunes, and we're going to make recommendations <laughs> just for you. So here's one inspired by Bruce Springsteen. Here's one called Bring, Bring the Big Rock. Let's, let's play that. Yeah, looks like it's coming to Android according to a press release. Business Wire released their press release way, like, way too early. They just done a press release. <laughs> they issued their press release. Pro- Isn't that against their like, NDA? Like, you usually have to wait, right, until they announce it? Usually. But I guess they have announced it. Too late. Looks like they didn't. And so here are some brand new albums from the artists that I really love. Now here's an interesting one, Cuban, a Cuban playlist. You might be wondering, how did that get in there? Well, I like a lot of Latin music, and so oh, no. music knows that, and it's recommending this playlist to me. Let's take a look at it. I feel like, oh god, this guy. <laughs> I'm sure he has a very important high role at Apple, but I feel like he's just like the joke <laughs> when, wow. it, when it comes to the whole presentation. Hey, potato. That's going to become a gift. Now let's take a look at what's new. <laughs> Two out across the top. More here, and even the hot singles that are out. Let's this is a pretty long event. It is. Two hours so far. This and is, this is the one more thing. The one more thing is cost. Uh, yeah. uh, they said, screw the time limit. I keep scrolling and see some recent releases. Here's one that But of course, everyone loves the charts. So let's go ahead and take a, seat, take a look at the charts. See the top songs, the top albums, 
and even the top music videos. We have tens of thousands. I don't, I don't know what I feel about the interface. I feel like it's too to say too iOS. He sounds stupid, but <laughs> I kind of wanted them to go more visual. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, everybody just is dropping their PRs and their press releases. Now, sometimes you just want to sit back and let someone else be your DJ. So let's go to radio. And to give you a little taste of what Beats 1 is going to sound like. Oh, is that what the radio station is called, Beats 1? Yeah, beat song. This is ain't like. They must have paid him a shitload to host that. <laughs> they got him from the BBC, I think, right? Their advantage is they have like they already have the customer base established. You know what I mean? Yeah. In a way. Here's Chris Cornell. This is an interesting one. He's actually posted lyrics of a new song that's coming out before, obviously, he's even recorded it. Uh, here's the steel. <laughs> this is totally ping, man. This is the ping portion. Ping fortress. I completely forgot about ping. Like that slipped my mind that they even did that. behind the scenes and see what the process that an artist uses to create a song. As we keep going down, here's a, a shot from Alabama Shakes a couple nights ago. And here's a studio session, actually a Capital Studio A. Those of you that know, Capital Studio is one of the premier studios in historical, and uh, Alabama Shakes was just there a couple nights ago. This is a crazy long on last thing. Yeah. Again, be able to see things you've never been able to hear or see. Uh, Lauren Kramer, you've probably never heard of him. He's an unsigned artist. I just started following him. He's actually posted his new song right up on Connect, and I'd love to play it now. First time anyone's heard it. Dang, they're really going in with this stuff. A lot of people are saying the only thing is that they want to pay money for now is an actual good migration tool for streaming services. $9.99, for a family plan, apparently. We think he's going to be really, really huge. Now, of course, you can always search for music across all of our millions and millions of songs. But I like to do a little bit of stuff with Siri, because Siri's been learning a lot more about music. Play Born to Run. Isn't that just going to play it the music? Favorite Are you a Spotify Premium member, Duncan? I'm not. I used to be. Oh, you don't? Oh, so you, you listen to music that often anymore? Uh, I listen to mixes on YouTube. Mm. <laughs> Apple is copying Google I.O. 7 hour keynote now. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. And let's go back to my high school days when I graduated. 
Stop showing what us music. <laughs> Is ten dollars a month really that ex? How expensive do you okay, like I always see people like okay, I saw this argument with title, right? Like twenty dollars a month, which I can see is a little bit more expensive than obviously ten dollars, you know? Yeah. I see people now asking for like student pricing on ten dollars a month. Well it's because Spotify does it. They do like four ninety nine for students, right? Oh really? Is that why? Play the song I think so. Well they do do they do a lot of discounts. Okay. I never knew like I mean I feel like ten dollars is totally fair. I feel like twenty dollars is fair if you're like buying an album every at least one album a month. Play the song from Selma. What's a family plan? I'm guessing you can use multiple people then? And that is Siri, and that is Apple Music. <laughs> it is a revolutionary music service with recommendations just for you, a worldwide live radio station with the world's best DJs, an exciting way for fans to connect with And meanwhile, and Twitter course, is releasing an update for the reply. The iTunes Music Store, the best place to buy music. Apple Music is all of the ways you love music, all in one place. And we're launching in over 100 countries later this month with iOS 8.4 for your iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad, as well as a new version of iTunes for the Mac, a new version of iTunes for Windows, and Android is coming this fall. Oh, look at that. Uh, Across the board. Music is just $9.99 a month, the cost of an album. And we want everyone to try it. And so we're making the first three months free. Ooh. How much money do you think they lose there? <laughs> now, we want to do something really great for families. Today, you have to buy a music subscription for each and every person. Or you share an account, even though you're not supposed to. And now all of you can't play at the same time. And your playlists and recommendations get all messed up. Well, with Apple Music... For just fourteen ninety nine, you can have up to six family members. Everyone. Dang, that, that's a good deal. I think. Just share them with their friends. Everyone gets their own account, their own <laughs> library, their own recommendations. It's an incredible value. And that is Apple Music. Thank you. Turn it back to Tim. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. Isn't that amazing? really love Apple Music and we hope that you do too. And we're so excited about it and with all the countries we're rolling out to, we made a great ad to tell the world about it. And I'd love to run it for you now. Another ad, okay. I'm jumped to my camera. All right. Still here, 4 a.m. 7 p.m. for you, Duncan? <laughs> yeah, 8 p.m., 8.20. They're playing some ads right now, so that's why I'm switching off the view. So nine ninety nine, free for three months. This is Apple's new music streaming service and who knows right now whether or so, not... Do you have to have an Apple device to get hold of this? I guess you don't, because it's part of iTunes. No, it's a part of iTunes, yeah. So, as a Windows iTunes person, I should be able to get hold of this, right? Yeah, Windows. You can use it on your PC, yeah. PC, Mac, iOS, and Android. Interesting. I don't understand why I'd want this, but I'll try it out. Yeah, free for three months. I mean, if you... Yeah. I just got on Spotify recently, and I use Tidal right now, so I just want to throw them all together to see which one I'm going to end up sticking with. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. We want to thank everybody for joining us, especially the developers. 
and I'd like to recognize all of the people in Apple, all of our team that have worked I mean, they so definitely... hard on making yeah. and creating all of these products you've seen before. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Everybody's like, if you're listening to your music on your Beats headphones, you don't need high quality anyway. <laughs> These videos are so well edited. Huh? These videos are so well edited. Which one? They're ads? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they are. They do really good ads, for sure. With an incredible music performance by the The Weeknd! Artist in music Dang, they have everybody at that event. What the heck? Not only a hot new artist, but he's going to do a world. I don't know, I can't see it. You you got it focused on you. What'd you say? As like, if you, as they are finished, you still got it focused on you. Oh yeah, yeah. Video feed is on you. <laughs> I've been watching from yours. I'm sorry. Yeah, I had no idea. I totally forgot. The weekend's on there now. Now they're having the artist. Oh, okay. Party. Where is he? He's premiering his new song, apparently. Oh, I get this world premiere of a new track. It's the weekend already. All right, so you'll play us out. Um, I don't, yeah, I mean, like you were saying, the twenty four seven radio station. That's not like crazy to me. I mean, I like the talent behind it, but I don't. That's nothing new. Obviously, it's not going to be a selling point. I think of the service. I think to even remotely overthrow Spotify, you need to have the, a vaster library, right? Like, yeah. And then you can focus on. Well, iTunes has got a super huge library. Yeah, that's the thing. It has a vast library. Um, uh. What do you call that? What else is there? Hang on, I'm gonna switch my camera just so. Um, the title obviously just focuses on quality. I mean, like, <laughs> Daniel Eck is just tweeted. Oh, okay. It's the uh, CEO and founder of Spotify. <laughs> wow. I feel like them and and title. Title is probably you just retweeted radio on the internet. You're welcome. What? I mean, that's nothing revolutionary. I mean, obviously, they're hyping that up, but I think more so if like what Title was trying to do, which it could be a big thing in the future, is like exclusivity, like having artists release their tracks exclusively via you know a service. Title's been doing that, Spotify doesn't have that. I think, I think if Apple can do more of that, I don't know. Yeah, it says here Drake to release his next album using Apple's music new connect feature. We're seeing more and more of that. Like, uh, this like exclusivity stuff. I think, I think that's. I mean, like that's. I don't think that's something we would see them doing like years ago. You know. Like getting in tune with what's going on in the whole music space. That'd be interesting to see. That wraps up WWDC 2015, iOS 9, and L Capitan. What, what else was there? Watch OS 2, Apple Music. Uh, pretty much the main stuff, right? Sorry? Pay updates. I'm trying to think of everything. Apple Pay updates. Thing, right. So a recap, my friend. Well, yeah, what what you pretty much just tweeted about. Yeah. El Capitan, it's got some extra refinements and features. iOS nine, big thing, multitasking. 
More um, iPad, more I went iPad. new features on the watch, new extra bits on Apple Pay. Yep. And Apple Music. So nothing groundbreaking. No, no, no. Nothing that we not like we expected at this time. Nothing either. that makes you run out to an Apple store right now. Yeah, yeah. I think I think they've been moving away from that with these I mean you're you're right, they're definitely gearing towards what the conference stands for nowadays. Yeah. I see a lot of it was was aimed at developers. Yeah. As it's supposed to be, I guess. Makes so. sense, obviously. But yeah, it's a great time considering it used to be used for major releases to actually use it for that. But yeah, yeah, I feel like it's just hard when you're used to it being being that. I feel like it's like you expect that, you know, like nothing compares to those uh, events where they were releasing hardware and stuff. Yeah, but I guess nowadays they just do like hardware-related events, huh? Like iPad and, and stuff like that whenever they need to. Um. Because I, I think, I mean, like last time they had an event last year was it in June, like the, or sorry, not June, July, like right after, the month after, they just had another event. So, we will see, we will see. Nothing, nothing crazy. I think in my expectations video, I said the things I'm most excited for were, I think, I know the streaming service, I just want to see what the streaming service, what it would be, what it would actually offer. And then I think beyond that, iOS 9, I think, is, is really the main things I'm really excited for. I mean, OS 10 will be a nice little update, uh, free, all that good stuff. But uh, nothing crazy. I mean, we're yet, we'll, we'll see where Apple Music goes. That's still like a, still a big if. I got a lot of hurdles to jump, for sure. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it, right? It wraps everything up. It does wrap everything up. Another event, another year. What, what year is this for us? They, they said this is a this is our twenty sixth WWDC. Don't they only do one a year? How is that possible? I know twenty six. That makes. Does that just mean? Have they been doing this twenty six years? There's no. I mean, there's, I mean, I'm not even. No, sure. no. <laughs> I think I just. I think I don't think you meant twenty six WWCC. It must be the twenty sixth keynote. That would make sense because they've done. It's Unless has WWE been year? around that long? Maybe they've well, had. I don't know. Maybe, no, maybe they're talking about like the earliest Apple OS things. No, it, it oh. has. It has been around this long, dude. Really? I just typed in WWDC 1998, and they have an event. Wow. Worldwide Developers Conference. Started in founded nineteen ninety. Wow. So oh. gosh, when did we start covering this too? Uh it's gotta be at least five years ago, right? I think it's gotta be at least five times I've done yeah, this. Well, it's gotta be longer five, than that. At least five maybe six or seven years uh, at least. Um, but I mean, we've definitely seen it evolve. Like, it, it gone into like, I mean, I remember when they used to do big OS releases. Now the OS releases are just, I mean, even with Yosemite, they, they've they've done these incremental or not, in, the, in the same with Windows, like in the same respects. None of them are really like detrimental upgrades. Like, you don't have to upgrade right now. You don't even have to upgrade. Yeah, to yeah, definitely. The same way you don't have to upgrade to what are you on Windows Ten right now? Uh, well, I'm on Windows Seven, but yeah, Windows Ten is the latest for for Windows side. But then that's not released until July 29th. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but I mean, everything we expected, I think. I mean, uh, didn't get my hopes up for hardware. I, I really thought that they were going to spend a lot of time with software, which they did. Some fun little stuff in there. They're like cool little advances, of course. I mean, obviously, from a technical perspective, it's all crazy. But I think me and Duncan are just very used to seeing a lot of this stuff. And yeah, I guess if you're just coming into this and seeing this sort of thing, it's pretty yeah. good. But for, the, yeah. for us, I don't know. Are we reaching burnout point? <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. I mean, I mean is it just because we've gone through so many iOS revisions and yeah, I, this kind of? I think and then it's just like you expected that stuff to be there. I think for like people who, if you're not like you, like you said, like if you're not expecting these things, they're great things. I mean, they're great things regardless. But I mean, if you're not expecting these things, if you didn't know that they were possible, like if you didn't know like multitasking and split apps and and things of that nature, like most, like I would say like 80% of the consumers, you know, then it's cool. Like you get the iPad and you're like, whoa, like you can do this thing now, you know? Yeah, it seems like we were there for the for the base 
a bit. Like we were there for the found. Even though I said today it was about foundations, whatever, we were there for the foundations. Yeah. And it seems like they built it. They built it up and they built it up and they 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 got to a point where it's fine. It's great. It's critical mass. Everyone's still happy with it. Yeah. But they're still trying their best to add to it, but it's it will yeah, never like be as good as the you like the, yeah. Like yeah. the same way I think about an iPhone. Like I was talking to a friend about this. Like. What do you do from this point on? Like, you can make the camera better. You can make it faster. You can. I, I like the idea, like you said, like today they went back to the foundation. I, I've always liked that. Like, I don't want a new crazy, like, I don't need like a curved screen. I don't need like a, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't need like a, what else is the phone doing out there? I don't know. Like, I don't need the phone to be waterproof. Like, like back to the foundation, I need really good battery life, like you were saying. Like, super good battery life. Like, we need on those battery things. life is the biggest freaking thing in the yeah. world right now that's yeah. limiting everybody. Improving on those base things. Like, even if at the surface it doesn't look like a crazy huge update to the, like, the mass pop, you know, population, if you can focus on those core things that go into these devices, I think that's, like, a huge step forward it's one of those small things that's like a domino effect that people don't even realize i think too but um, absolutely yeah i think that's about everything though right about yep, yep, yep. covers it so where can people find more of you duncan as always uh i'm at mobile 2003 on the youtubes i'm working on a technology database which as i said earlier will just contain el capitan from this <laughs> you know <laughs> but it's at dunksweb.com slash tech base. We've got a community against that as well, which is pretty cool. That's it, really. So definitely check out his stuff there, guys. And, and obviously, I mean, you can tell from the reception that this is definitely a, like a developer-centric thing because, I mean, nobody even wants, like, these these live streams, it's, it's unless you're, like, a geek, hardcore, like, you're not tuning into these ones like you are into the iPhone releases and yeah. Like I don't think, I think a lot, none of the my friends or people I know or talk to even know that these exist. So yeah, you've got to be a technology just, enthusiast to be wanting to talk yeah. to, to find out about this stuff. Exactly. Like the main, I tell my friends, and if they do know about this, like it's the main question they always ask. It's just like, oh, is there a new iPhone? Is there a new, is there a new iPhone? iPhone? Yeah. That's all it's they care. That's the question on anybody's mind. Yeah. So I'll have to do a, a job of taking this what like near near two and a half hour keynote and then just condensing it down in a bit to an overview. Uh, that being said, thank you all very much for watching, and uh, I guess we will catch you all in the uh, the next. Next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, next WWDC. Whatever yeah. whatever event comes next. All right. Later. Bye.